Hello there. I take it that you're out there. <laughs> I'm sitting here looking at the screen and I can just see my own face. So I know we've just gone live. So I'm just going to wait a few minutes because there may be a few of you, could be a few minutes late, and I don't want to start the presentation in the first 10 seconds. So anyway, hi, how are you doing? Um, have you ever had someone ask you the question, when was the last time you did something for the first time? <laughs> well, that's me. I have never done this before. But um, you've got to get into it. So, okay. Cool. Oh, there's a few things coming up in the chat. Wow, g'day mate from the Wagga Bloke. Cool. Tobias, Ken Robinson, Rob Matthews, fantastic. So yeah, look, I'm being stretched out of my comfort zone tonight uh, doing this, doing a live. Uh, I guess if I do it a few times, I'll, I'll be a bit more relaxed with it. So I'm just going to grab the nerves and just go like that <laughs> and chuck the nerves out the window. And um, yeah, so it's going to be great. It's great to see you guys in the chat. Great to see of you, some of you saying hi. That's awesome. Orca. Ken Robinson, you look pretty relaxed, Roger. This is your fir for your first time. Thanks, Ken. Awesome. So how long have we been going? So I might start in just a second. So I'm really honoured that you'd spend your time to come and join me tonight. And I, res I respect your time. So basically just to let you know what's happening tonight is I've created a training for tonight for fundamentals for beach fishing, which in a moment I'm going to start that presentation. And also it's an introduction to rogersfishing.com and what's available on Rogers Fishing and what I've been working on for about the last six months. Been really busy actually because um, I have about seven videos on the go at the moment. I've got another video that's going live on YouTube next Tuesday. Um, so I've been really busy filming. Okay, Edit Suite, I can see Edit Suite there, John C. So um, yeah, I've been so busy. Um, and as you know from looking at my videos on YouTube, I'm a pretty keen fisherman. Um, I'm always, uh, I just get pumped. I'm into it. But um, there's a bit of work that goes into making all the YouTube videos because they are not what you'd call so much organic videos. Um, they're Because they're teaching videos, I put a fair bit of thought into them, how I'm trying to get the message across. And I prepare, it's almost like preparing a lesson when I'm doing those videos. So, you know, a fair bit of thought goes into it. And then there's obviously the practical side of making the videos. So that's why my videos, are, anyway, recently haven't been coming out so often. Anyway, so that's probably enough chat, enough banter. So I'm going to start my teaching in a few seconds. And then directly after that, I'll be coming back on live like this to answer questions uh, after the training. I'm not actually putting a time frame on this because I'm just going to run with it and flow with it. So I'm happy to chat at the end of it. Okay, Michael Burek, good day. Leslie Watson, cool. Awesome. Okay, well, here we go. We are going to move into the training part of it and then I will be back before too long. And we can get together and hopefully I'm going to answer some of the questions uh, that some of you sent through during the week by email. So I've got a bunch of them I'm going to answer. And also, if you put questions in the chat while the training's going on, I'll also endeavor to answer as many of them as I can at the end of the training. So here we go. Hopefully all this technology works. Okie dokie, here we go. Beginner's Guide, Beach Fishing for Fundamentals. Welcome. So tonight we're going to be doing this teaching on some fundamentals of beach fishing, plus at the end of the teaching, 
I'll be doing a live Q&A session, which I'm really looking forward to. I'm not putting a time limit on that. I'm just going to stay online and answer as many questions as possible. So you are in the right place. If you've spent hundreds of dollars on fishing gear, but you don't know where to start. I understand what that what that's like. Lots of people are in that position because they've got the gear, but they're just not really sure how to get going. And you're also in the right place if you would like to consistently catch fish. That's a big one, isn't it? You know, imagine being able to go fishing and 90% of the time have success and catch a feed. I know that that's probably about the the ratio of my success. I actually pretty much expect to catch fish every time I go fishing, and it's more of a rare thing not to catch fish. So let's have a look at what the average fisherman spends on even just setting up a basic beach fishing outfit. Now this is um, more what I'm saying here, the average cost, because there is obviously a low cost and a high cost. But these items, rod, reel, line, backpack, knife, head torch, hooks and sinkers, etc. And also bait, they're all very standard items and undoubtedly there would be other things that you would take to the beach. I always take a small cutting board uh, and various other things. I've got pliers and so forth. Um, I was talking to the owner of the Complete Angler in Ulladulla recently and I asked him what's the average cost for someone to set up for a beach fishing outfit and he said to me well you can buy one of those like ultra cheap combos for about a hundred bucks or hundred and twenty dollars with a rod and reel and some line on it but obviously that is uh, very low quality and won't last very long but more the average price of a rod and reel is what you're looking at there. A decent reel, you know, you could spend $300 or a lot more. And also for a good quality beach fishing rod, you could certainly spend $250. Yes, you can buy some in the $150, $180 range. He also mentioned to me that you can spend up to $1,500, $2,000 on the top of the range beach rod and reel. And depending on your budget, um, you know, whether you want to buy something that's kind of in the middle, you don't want to buy the cheapest, you don't want to buy the most expensive, but you want to get something that's reasonable, certainly it's in the realms of what we're looking at here. And you might be thinking, why, why would you focus on this, Roger? Well, I just think it's a good idea to realise we actually spend this sort of money to go fishing and more, not including our time and petrol, etc., but we want to get results from our investment. And I find that there's a lot of people who have all the gear, but they don't know where to fish. I mean, that's a pretty basic one, isn't it? Not really sure where to go fishing in relation to beach fishing. Where, where do I go at the beach? What's the best place, etc. They don't know when to fish the right time to fish. They don't know which bait to use. And they don't know what rig to use. Um, I think that's pretty common. I mean, certainly with beginners, you know, you're in that place. So it's really important. You know, you might have spent a lot of money on gear, but you actually need information. You need information and strategy. And there's probably quite a few fishermen who are a little bit like this guy, who's uh, got all the gear but's a bit frustrated. And I've been finding since I started my YouTube channel, which has only really been going for about three years, I've been getting so many people reaching out to me and asking questions, which I think is awesome because I love making videos that help people and, and it's great to get the feedback. So I just thought I'd give you a little very quick history about my YouTube channel. It's only been going for a few years and really even five years ago I had no idea that I'd be doing this. I've obviously been a fisherman all of my life but initially I started making videos 
on beachworming because that's something that is a passion of mine and I'm really skilled at it. And when I did some research, I found I realized that there was a lot of people who were interested in learning how to catch beachworms, but they didn't really have any good teaching or instruction. In fact, there wasn't even a book in existence in Australia on beachworming. Usually you would buy a magazine or a fishing book and it would devote maybe one or two pages to beachworming, which was just silly because there's no way you're going to actually learn from that. So I wrote a book on beachworming. I'd never written a book before um, and I published that a few years ago and created a website, beachworming.com.au, where I sell my book and also I sell a beachworming masterclass video series. And uh, that's a 50-page book. It's actually, I'm really, really pleased with the end result of the book. It's got great instruction and certainly people are becoming successful catching beachworms reading my book and watching my videos. And then, of course, I started making fishing videos because you catch beachworms as bait to go fishing. And um, this is an example of one of my videos, which is on rigs for beach fishing. And incredibly, it's had 300 odd thousand views in just over a year. And I get a lot of comments from people, which has been a massive encouragement to me, because you can see this comment from this uh, fellow Martin. G'day Martin, if you're watching. Um, and I get a lot of comments like that, heaps. And really that, uh, how do I put it into words? But Because my whole purpose is I'm not making brag videos and I'm not making videos just pulling fish in. My whole purpose is to help you and is to provide teaching that actually works. So when I get comments like this, it's like, what, that's awesome. I'm achieving my goal, which is which is great. And so that's led me into becoming a beachworming guide, just really only in the last few years where I take people and I teach them how to catch beachworms. And here's a few of my customers. In the middle, we've got Matt with his little boy. Um, and often when you go beachworming, uh, you get followed by crabs because they can smell your bait that you're using for the beachworms. And that's just a crab that I grabbed when I was teaching Matt and his son how to catch beachworms. And there's a couple of other customers. There's a guy on the right. That's actually Narrabeen Beach. Uh, it's a great beachworming beach. Um, and when I was on the northern beaches, I've only been living down the south coast for two and a half years, but I was doing a few lessons at Narrabeen and there's some good worms there. I, really, that whole stretch is a, a fantastic worming beach. And then over on the far left is another mat with his daughter, Lucy. Um, and they birth, birth, sorry about that, um, it only took one lesson and they were both catching beach worms. And then of course I've been doing a bit of fishing guiding as well. Um, just recently too, um, I have had people reaching out and asking me to do that, which um, I've enjoyed doing because I love meeting people and also um, helping them with their fishing. So these are some of the things I've started doing just in the last couple of years alongside creating instructional fishing videos on YouTube. Now, this is a guy whose name's Ken, and Ken reached out to me from YouTube. Um, him and a couple of mates were on YouTube one night, and they found one of my videos. They loved it so much that they sat there, and they watched eight of my videos in a row while they were drinking their white wine. And Ken used to be involved in, um, he actually was, he worked for Rupert Mur Murdoch at one point in publication, and, and he was a radio announcer. And he just said he just really appreciated the quality of my videos. Anyway, I got together with Ken. He came down and he couldn't fish at all. He had the desire. He couldn't even cast. Check him out. So I hold right. it like that. And, and it went about 10 feet. Great. Now, Ken, were you seriously trying then? I was. You were? <laughs> Yeah, I was. It didn't look like it. <laughs> Roger, get me off the camera. I'm embarrassing myself. Come and tell me what I need to do. All right, Ken. Okay. Come and tell me what I need to do. Now, Ken, yeah, that's it. Wind it in. <laughs> At least I know how to do that part. Oh, that's pretty funny. Uh, I'm, not, I'm quite sure uh, Ken's cringing a little bit. And then I actually took him fishing. He'd never been fishing off the beach. 
and I had to teach him lots of different things, but this is Ken pulling in his first fish. What do you got on there? I have no idea. <laughs> What have you caught? What have I caught? <laughs> Ken, that's your first fish off the beach. Oh, look at this. Look at the size of that. Wow, look at that. That's bigger than my one. <laughs> wow, look at that. I mean, I thought yours was large when you brought it in. I now came to Paris and look at that. Um, you know, you know, that might only be a salmon, but you know, it's a big thing for someone who hasn't caught a fish off the beach before, or even landed one in the surf. And, um, actually I took Ken fishing the following night and I actually had to teach him how to tell the difference between a wave breaking on your line and a bite. Cause a lot of people get confused by that. They end up pulling their line in or striking, thinking they've had a bite. They've still got their bait on. And their bait really needs to be out there in the water where the fish are, and you end up wasting time. So that's that's something that's in my beach for worm, sorry my beach fishing masterclass course. I teach you um, how to um, tell bites on the beach, in amongst all the movement, and how to land fish on the beach. I've just thrown a couple of my photographs in because you probably know me for beach fishing. Um, but I also do a lot of other fishing. This was an early morning mulloway that I caught. And I caught this one on some fresh squid. I actually went down and jigged up some fresh squid the, the afternoon before. Went down in the morning and I actually hooked a mulloway before this one that was much bigger that the hooks pulled on because I had a whole squid head on for bait with a 10-0 hook I played this other big fish for about six or seven minutes and then it came off. I wound my line in and I still had the whole squid head. But what had happened is the barb of my hook had become impaled in the squid head because it was a big bait, big awkward bait. But um, And so that big Jewy had swallowed it, but the barb wasn't protruding. So he swam around and coughed it up after a few minutes. And I was extremely distressed at losing what I knew was a really good fish. But I put my next bait on and I threw out and I caught this one on the next cast. So my sadness soon turned to joy. But there was obviously a few Jewies around that morning. So let's move on to the next one. This is just another, another quick pick of another big Jewy. And it just brings me to a point in looking at this fish because I caught this fish um, out of my boat at the mouth of the Hawkesbury River at a spot that I fish quite often near Lion Island. It's a cracking big mulloway spot and I've caught a number of fish there and often multiple fish. But one of my fundamentals today is called um, you get what you aim for. And even in this instance, fishing for fish like this, before you even throw a line in the water, anchoring your boat and positioning your boat correctly is critical when it comes to fishing for big mulloway. Um, and so before you even get to line and bait, tide, all of those things, there's, you know, you don't just catch fish like this by going out in your boat and not having a strategy and just throwing your line out anyway, anywhere. But certainly if you know what you're doing, and you have focus, you can consistently catch fish like this. This is another shot of my boat uh, with, a, with a boatload of snapper. I've done, a, I've done fairly extensive deep sea fishing and I was the president of a fishing club for about 10 years. I used to organize fishing competitions, deep sea, uh, rock and beach, estuary, and I fished I specialised in snapper fishing for about 10 years and had many great catches of snapper. This particular photo, I didn't break the law. That's my bag limit. I was out there with another guy and we caught 20 snapper. We stopped at 20 snapper. So that is 10 snapper each. 
in a, in mid, in a daytime session in the middle of the day. But um, just so that you know a little bit more about me, I, I'm not just a beach fisherman. I've done a lot of deep sea fishing, mainly focusing on snapper, mulloway and kingfish. I was kind of more interested in that. I wasn't so concerned about trolling for marlin and stuff like that. Okay, a couple more photos, just a couple more quick photos. These are a couple of recent shots. The one on the left is a snapper I caught off the rocks this year. Just a mid-range size, but you know, beautiful eating fish. And the one on the right I caught in October last year. Once again, not a massive snapper, but you know, just beautiful fish. And uh, I actually don't have a lot of time for that at the moment because I've been focusing on beach fishing and making beach fishing videos. But I'm certainly keen on snapper fishing as well. And here's a quick shot of a kingfish that I caught on 20 pound line and an unweighted pilchard. And if you know anything about kingfish, they uh, fight really hard. They're dirty fighters. They'll, they'll go for the reef and try and um, snag you. But I landed this one, which was awesome. So that's just a little bit more about some of my, um, my fishing experience. Now let's move forward. My goal with tonight's teaching is to get you and your tackle, plus the four keys I'm going to be teaching you tonight, equals, you know, having some results. And in this case, it's a friend of mine, Phil. it has got a lovely whiting there that uh, he caught on a morning session that I took him. Uh, and that was actually at Bungan Beach which is a good beach fishing. I used to fish there a fair bit at Bungan. So just quickly, where are you on your fishing journey? Are you a dreamer? You have the vision of yourself catching great fish, but you know it's kind of more of a, an idea and a vision, but you haven't put much action to it yet. Or perhaps you're what I call a newbie. You're a complete beginner, but and you've actually started fishing, but you lack clear direction. You need, you know, you need information, you need help and knowledge. Or perhaps you are a tryhard. Now that's not a negative turn. Um, that means that you're committed to your beach fishing and you're putting in the time and the effort, but you're not having the success that you'd like to have. You know, you're someone, you're certainly not lacking motivation. You know, you're getting into it, but you, um, you're you not really kicking the goals that you want to kick. And then, of course, there is the catcher, what I call the catcher. So you're someone, you're, you're a reasonably good fisherman. You're certainly achieving some goals um, and catching some fish. But you'd like to increase your skills and target trophy fish like Mulloway. Oh, I, I guess when you're beach fishing, that's probably the main goal. Uh, main goal of people they'd love to be able to do that at some point so it would be great at this point if you could put something in the chat um, maybe you could just put in the chat uh, you know just let me know where you are are you are, are you a total beginner are you someone who's having reasonable success but would like to improve if you could put that in the chat that'd be great and then after this presentation, I will answer your questions. Well, but it gives me an idea of um, how many of you are experienced or not experienced. So the end goal is for all of us to become a skilled angler in whatever style of fishing that we're doing. So how do we get there? Well, from my experience, I can't overstate this. Knowledge and strategy is probably the, the greatest need of fishermen or the most important thing because we can have the gear but if we don't have that key information um, it is very much hit and miss. And how do we get that key information? I know that it's something through my fishing I've always tried to align myself with other successful fishermen because I'm just desperate to learn and just really keen. So if I see someone who is having success in a certain area, I ask lots of, question, lots of questions and I try to be polite uh, and not annoy them. 
but yeah, uh, I'm so hungry to learn. And I'm like that now. I'm always taking in information. I'm always learning things. I'm always storing stuff in my fishing brain. So now we're going to start our four fundamentals. So the first one or step one is where do I start? Let's look at rod and reel setup. Now, if you're not a total beginner, I just ask that you just be patient just with this little bit here because I just need to put in and perhaps answer a couple of questions as to if someone's wanting to buy a rod and reel off the beach, just to give them a little bit of advice about that. So you'll find that most companies divide their range into three categories of rods, heavy, medium and light. I'm just going to keep it simple like that because I'm not going to go into the technique technical side of rod building um, and in the different weights of rods and uh, all the technical information but it's quite easy and if you really want to look at it light surf would be for fishing for smaller fish like whiting and brim a medium surf you could still fish for the smaller fish but you've got a little bit more grunt and you can uh, if you hook a, a larger fish you've got a you can handle it better the rod's going to handle it better and then heavy surf is mainly for targeting things like Mulloway. And if you're interested in catching sharks, you just need a bigger, heavier setup, heavier line, etc. And to start off with, I recommend a medium surf. If you're just gonna if you're gonna buy one rod, and I've said here 10 to 12 foot, but I think probably I would prefer to go for the longer rod uh, of 12 foot. Uh, a two-piece rod, because if you're using a, a two-piece rod, then you can easily put it in the car. You just pull it in half, you've got two six foot lengths and you can fit that in just about any car. And coupled with a spinning reel that will hold approximately 200 metres of 20 pound monofilament line capacity. Now you might ask a question, why am I recommending 20 pound line as a general, like uh, all round outfit? Well, the, the, re the reason is because you could, if you want to target whiting, you can make your whole rig and leader out of, for example, 12 pound fluorocarbon and catch as many whiting as you want. But you do have the, sli the slightly heavier line, so if you hook a bigger fish, you have a little bit more capability. And if you're not fishing for whiting, you can fish for tailor and salmon off the beach and you've just got a little bit more grunt, a little bit more strength in your line. Because I know having fished off the beach a lot with 10 pound line, it's pretty light. It's good for whiting, but it doesn't take much to break that. And if you're a relative beginner, you need a little bit of margin. Uh, you've, got to, you've got to give yourself a bit of leeway because you're probably learning how to play fish as well. And if you hook a larger fish, um, you just need, it just needs to be a little bit forgiving. Now with spinning reels, most companies that I've looked at, their, their reel sizes are not all the same. They vary from company to company. And I'm just estimating that a spinning reel in the 6,000 to 8,000 size would be approximately the size reel that you could fit 200 to 250 metres of 20 pound line on. But uh, you'll have to look at the different brands, you know, whether it's Daiwa or Shimano or Penn or whatever brand of reel that you buy. And also, I will talk about later the basic equipment that you should have in your uh, fishing backpack when you go down to the beach. So let's move to step number two or fundamental number two. Now before I just start that, when you look at that image on the right, just focus on the fish. Don't focus on the manly hat that I'm wearing. I'll just pause for a minute just to allow you to either laugh or get angry. Anyways, <laughs> okay, so um, your second thing is to choose your target. You get what you aim for. I mentioned that a little bit when I was talking around that photo of that Mulloway earlier. You know, I wouldn't catch fish like that if I wasn't focused and if I wasn't aiming at something specific. And it's the same thing with beach fishing or all fishing, really. 
And you find that many fishermen fail because they have a random approach. I mean, it's like you getting an arrow. If you just go down to the beach, uh, you don't have a plan and you just have any old bait. It's like you getting an arrow and firing it up into the air and you just don't know where it's going to land. You're not actually aiming at anything. So I can certainly tell you that if you make a decision what you want to fish for and then you tailor your you know, your strategy, then you'll achieve that goal. So you don't want to have a random approach. And you may or may not know, I mean, a lot of you would know, but do you know you can decide what species of fish to catch? How good's that? I mean, by tailoring your rigs and your bait, your location, etc., you can specifically target certain fish. Now, this image on the right of that whiting, which is a cracking whiting, I'm actually standing at Collaroy Beach on the Northern Beaches. I'm going to give you a bit of specific information tonight when I'm talking to you because you may live in Sydney, you may live on the Northern Beach Beaches, you may not. But I'm fishing there at Collaroy Beach. I, got, I had a lovely catch of whiting that night, caught quite a few. But Collaroy Beach is a cracking whiting beach. I can highly recommend it. Where I am there, I'm about 200 metres north of the pipe at Collaroy. And really the Collaroy to Narrabeen stretch is a great, it's a big beach and it's a great stretch, but certainly it's, I don't know why, but Collaroy just seems to produce a lot of whiting. So the species that you decide on will influence the bait that you use, your rig, possibly the tide, the location and time of day. So once you've decided what type of fish that you'd like to catch, then you've got to make these decisions and uh, you'll be heading in the right direction. My main motivation uh, when I'm fishing is I like to catch fish that I like eating. I'm not really interested in catching fish that are just so-so to eat. So obviously I like whiting, uh, you know, all the main species, whiting, brim, I, fish, I like to fish for snapper, Jewfish, even um, groper are a great eating fish off the rocks and drummer. I've been a drummer fisherman for many, many, many years. I love catching drummer. Got a lot of experience catching drummer off the rocks and they are one of my favourite fish to eat. They have amazingly moist white flesh and with different fish, you get a different yield of flesh. Some fish are a lot of bones and not much fillet. But drummer, you get a really good yield off drummer. You get lovely, big, thick fillets off drummer. As opposed to snapper. Snapper are a fish that has a lot of bone. and uh, Even with big snapper, you can see the size of their head. Um, they're just an average yield uh, snapper. And while we're just talking about targeting a, a specific species, I'm just going to give you a bit of quick information about brim, for example, if you'd like to catch brim off the beach. I don't have it on the slide here, so you would need to write this down. You'd need to take notes if you want this information. So what baits are good for brim off the beach? Now, brim actually are pretty much scavengers. They eat so many different things. But I've certainly found that pilchards are a great bait off the beach and certainly a half pilchard bait with a three or four o hook and a stinger is a cracking rig for brim off the beach. The only issue is um, <clears throat> you can very often get bitten off by Taylor with that rig. So if you've watched my recent video of the world's deadliest beach fishing rig, you get to fish for species like brim and flathead and you still catch them even though you use the wire trace. But if Taylor come along, you catch the Taylor as well and you don't lose your rigs. So also strips of fresh squid are a great bait for brim off the beach using a similar type of rig um, and many a mulloway has been caught on that bait. Also slab baits which is um, bits of fish fillet. You might catch a, a, um, a tailor or a salmon and you can fillet that and cut strips of that, that off. That's a really good bait. Uh, beach worms are a really good bait <coughs> Excuse me for brim. 
Many times when I go fishing for whiting with worms, I catch more brim than whiting. Sometimes I catch more brim, sometimes I catch mainly whiting with a couple of brim, but I nearly always catch brim as well. So beach worms are an epic bait, also nippers or yabbies, and the humble peeled prawn is a cracking bait for brim. I have caught, I don't know how many brim on peeled prawns, but I like to peel them. I like to take the shell off and use the shell for burley, chuck that in the water, and then use the peeled prawn for bait. Now, moving on to a rig for brim. Just very quickly, if you put, you just, it's a basic running sinker rig. So you put your sinker on your main line, then you tie on a swivel, then you tie on a leader of about 40 centimeters in length, and then you tie on your hook. So if you can picture that, you've got your line with a sinker coming down to a swivel, a leader, and then your hook. That's a good rig for brim because it's a running, uh, running rig. If the brim picks up the bait and swims off with it, it doesn't feel the weight of the sinker. What about tide? What's the best tide for brim? Well, the best tide off the beach for brim is the last couple of hours of the run-in tide and the high tide. You can catch them at all tide phases. However, the best time is the last couple of hours of the run-in and the high tide. And what about the time of year for brim? The best time of the year for brim off the beach, the best, best months are March, April, and May. Easter time is known as brim time. You can catch them all year round, but definitely March, April, May, off the beach and off the rocks is a cracking time for brim. Okay, let's move on to uh, the next thing. Oh, I think I've got a question to ask you. So I just would like to know, how are you finding this coaching session so far? It would be great to get some feedback, um, you know, good, bad, ugly, whatever you want to put in is good. Who has resonated with this tonight? Is anything that I'm saying making sense? Is it helpful? If you can put some comments in the chat that we can talk about when I come back to camera, that would be great. So yeah, I've just got that there. If you've got any questions, uh, put them down. I'm trying to get through this reasonably quickly because, as I mentioned, I respect your time. Um, but, you know, it just takes a little while, obviously, to, to teach and bring information. So I'll try not to be too long. Okay. So step number three or fundamental number three is what I call gather intelligence. This is very, very important. Now, you may think that some of the things I'm teaching you tonight, you might think, oh, look, this is pretty basic. But you know what? If you start off in the wrong direction, you're not going to get to your destination. And having the right information, the right intelligence is absolutely vital. That's just a couple of uh, Taylor over there on the right. Uh, they're both 60 centimetre fish. One of them's the one on the right, I think, 63 centimetres, and the other one's just over 60. So a, a, a couple of good solid tailor there. I'll give away another secret. Um, I caught those tailor off the beach at Tabari on the south coast. It's heaps of tailor at Tabari. Another little tip is the months of February and March seem to be there's monster tailor come in around those months. Uh, certainly on the south coast, all around where I live, um, February, March, oh, you, you get big schools of tailor coming in. You get absolute beasts. I'm quite sure I'm going to catch a metre tailor sometime soon. So gathering intelligence, knowledge is key. It actually saves you a lot of time because you can be barking up the wrong tree. You can go fishing. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how many times you've gone fishing and the conditions haven't been any good or you're just frustrated. You get down there. Um, you don't have confidence that you're in the right place or doing the right thing. So you really waste time. But if you focus, you're going to get a much better result. The first thing that I do is check the weather and ocean conditions. Because there's actually, when it comes to beach fishing, you know, there's parameters. You, there's no point in going fishing if the ocean is too big, too rough, too windy, etc. So what I do is I use one of the surfing websites. Um, I'm a surfer. 
I still surf now. Um, and I find the surfing websites, websites are very good for fishing because for beach fishing, they tell you the size of the waves, the height of the waves, the wind direction, the tide, um, all of those things that you need to know. So when it comes to beach fishing, I want to know how big the waves are, first of all. I prefer to fish when the waves are about a metre. Don't really want to fish, you know, once the waves get up to one and a half, two metres, there's just too much water movement. It doesn't mean you can't go fishing. Uh, it just takes a little bit more skill. Or perhaps you can, you know, when, when you've got big, there's always somewhere you can fish. But if the waves are big, you need to find somewhere that's a bit more protected. So I'd, pro I'd prefer to stick to uh, waves about a metre in height. And then, of course, you don't want a, a gale of wind. So really, if you've got, you know, light wind, you know, as it's getting dark and swell around a metre or so and a good tide, you're really setting yourself up for success. So that's first base. If I look at the weather and it's no good, then I wait until I've got the right conditions. I don't actually waste my time. I could talk a lot more about this. I actually talk a lot more about it uh, in, on, in Rogers Fishing. I've just created a beach fishing masterclass course that has 15 videos. And I go into a lot more detail on a whole lot of things in that course. But I'll tell you more about that later. Um, then what I do is I go to some beaches and view the structure. So I, fortunately I live near the beach and it's, this is something I enjoy doing. I go and buy a coffee and I drive to two or three, two or three beaches and just have a look at the setup. And by doing that, I then decide where I'm planning to fish. Uh, I usually do this the day before I'm planning to go fishing. Now, if you don't live near the beach, there's ways you can get around it. You can ring your local tackle shop. Um, you can look at some of those surfing websites where they have cameras and they'll give you a live camera view of, you know, you can type in the beach. A lot of them have cameras. But that's something that I do. And I also ask lots of questions. You know, that's easy enough to do. You know, I ask people, I ask what people are catching. You can also ring a local tackle shop and say, you know, can you give me, give me any information? What are people catching off the beach at the moment? Is anyone having any success? You know, just do a little bit of asking, asking around. And then based on these things, you make your decision where you're going to go fishing and when. But you know, by going through this process, you're eliminating failures because you're really just fine tuning in to go at the best time fishing the best structure and having a strategy. Like I said, it might seem basic, but you know, I'm married, I've got three sons. I love my fishing, I'm super keen. But you know, I have other responsibilities. And if I'm going to spend my time, I really want to get the best out of it. And I'm sure that many of you are in a similar place. You, you might have more time. Some people might have more time than other people. But, you know, if you don't have heaps of time, you want to aim for quality. Not only do you want to aim for quality, you want to get results when you go and come home with some food. I know Ken, actually, who was in those earlier videos, his wife and kids used to joke and say, he'd say he's going fishing and they'd say, well, where are you going fishing? Are you going to Coles? Or Woolworths. <laughs> anyway, there you go. Okay, step number four is take action. And then just quickly also, that photograph on the graph on the right-hand side is just a lovely catch of whiting, a typical catch. I caught those whiting in an evening session, just about an hour off the beach. Uh, you can see there's a trevally there. But those whiting are pretty big. Um, I'm thinking, look, I can't remember the length, but those big whiting are in the 40s, mid-40s centimetres. Uh, they're certainly some beautiful eating fish. And that picture is taken at North Narrabeen because I was fishing off the beach near the entrance of Narrabeen Lake, which is a great spot to fish. 
um, that particular bit of concrete is beside the bridge where you park your car and you walk up over the sand dune to go fishing. So there you go, I'm giving you some exact information if you are living in Sydney. Okay, so take action. Once again, knowledge acted upon brings results. You've just got to put one foot in front of the other and just do it. I'm like that. I'm, a, I'm the sort of fisherman, I'm a doer. I get out there and I'll have a go. You know, it's very easy to sort of, I mean, I'm just like you. I could be at home. It's warm. It's comfortable. You know, you can sit down with a glass of wine. But I guess my, you know, I just motivate myself to go. I mean, we can watch, only watch so much TV. And, you know, being out in the fresh air, oh, you just can't, you just can't compare it. Being out there, and especially if you go with a good friend, or even your wife, etc. You can't compare it. Okay, so nothing happens without effort. And the things that I'm teaching you are not difficult. You know, it doesn't really take that much time to choose the best weather. You can do that in five minutes by jumping on your computer or on your phone and going onto a surfing website or going to somewhere like Weather Zone. Um, and when you, if you have the Weather Zone app, you can, it's got an option. You can click Marine, and when you click Marine on Weather Zone, that will give you the wave graph, the wind graph, um, and the marine report. So it really takes five minutes to do that. And even going for a drive down to the beach and have a look, that's, that's a really enjoyable thing to do. You might spend half an hour doing that. But it's worth, you know, to get the results, it's worth doing these things and making the effort. So that's exactly what I'm saying. If you'll actually focus and do this, you will multiply your results by doing some basic prep. And... I can't see you at the moment. I will in a minute when I come back, but I'm sure there's a few of you who'll put your hand up. You know, that's what we want, isn't it? We want to have good catches. We want to have the results. So let's let's do this. And you can do it. And I'll just put here, make adjustments if necessary. When I'm considering where I want to go fishing based on the weather and the, the direction of the wind, there's always more than one option or a couple of different beaches because you might go down to, you might have made your decision where you're going to go fishing and you get down there and three or four other people have had the same idea and they're already standing there with their lines out in the spot that you've chosen. Well, you know, don't bother about that. Then don't waste time. Just get straight back in the car and go to your plan B location. You know, there's always other things. You've just got to make adjustments. Or if there's an unexpected weather change, the wind is coming from a different direction, that means you might need to go to a different beach which is more protected from the wind. But that's okay. You're all organised. You've got your gear ready. Um, you, just, you just flow with it. I could talk about that a lot more as well, but um, I'll just be watching the time, so we'll just keep moving on. Okay. Here's just a couple more shots. Uh, on the left, that's just a typical morning beach fish with some worms. Um, you can see in that photograph there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight brim and five whiting. But that's just a nice morning's catch. And um, that particular catch of fish was at Bungan Beach, the north end of Bungan Beach on Sydney's northern beaches. Then flicking over to the um, photo on the right, that's a relatively recent shot of me with an extra big tailor. You've got your standard size tailor hanging down. And uh, it's still fun when you catch a big fish of any kind. Okay, let's move on. And we'll be heading, heading into our Q&A very shortly. So, often you can be frustrated. You've got the gear, but you just, um, just don't have the information you need. And we've talked about how knowledge and strategy is crucial. In fact, it's, yeah, I, I can't emphasize that enough. But not only that, you know, it's, it's not like a one-off thing. You know, you need actually 
I've, you know, through the years, I've deliberately made friendships with various fishermen who I knew were really skilled at certain things. And I invested time into hanging out with them. Obviously, I made some good friends that way. But, you know, that's how you learn. Um, we all need someone to walk alongside us and mentor us and help us. So with th this is all part of what I've created with uh, Rogers Fishing, which is being launched tonight also. Actually, my new Rogers Fishing website has just gone, gone live um, in the last half hour or so. So I've actually created a 31-day fishing plan for beach fishing, which is around my uh, Beach Fishing Masterclass course. And as a member of Rogers Fishing, you have instant access to that course, which will help you with your beach fishing. So how do we get there? So basically, my location and time limit my ability to help people. I, I do guiding, etc. But it's just much better. I can help more people by doing this sort of thing and by writing good content and also creating helpful fishing videos. So that brings me to Rogers Fishing, the big unveiling of Rogers Fishing, which is, of course, a website. And on Rogers Fishing, I'll be doing a fortnightly Zoom Q&A, which means every two weeks, probably on a Thursday night at 7 p.m., I'll be coming on. And as a member of Rogers Fishing, you can join me. Uh, you can talk to me about what you've been doing. You can ask questions. You can let me know your struggles. And, and this is kind of like a regular ongoing thing where I get to know you and help you with your fishing. Then, of course, there's my beach fishing course, which has 15 videos. And also my beach worming, beach worming masterclass course, which has my book that I mentioned earlier and also three training videos. And we have a private membership group, which is on the Rogers Fishing platform. So it's not actually a uh, Facebook group. This is a private group. And one of the reasons is that, you know, if anything happened to Facebook, we'd lose all of our valuable you know, anything that we're learning through the group um, as the group grows, um, just to sort of save that, protect it. It's something which is exclusive to Rogers Fishing. And also, uh, as time goes on, I'll be creating a lot more courses, not just in beach fishing, but estuary fishing for popular species, rock fishing, deep sea fishing. Um, that's going to be growing quite rapidly. So... Um, I'm just going to give you a very quick peek uh, inside Rogers Fishing. This is just a screenshot of uh, the beginning of my beach fishing course, which is available, which has the 15 videos. And this is an example of the modules. There's module one and module two, which go into planning in a lot more detail and rod and reel setup. Then, for example, in these modules, which are videos and also a lot of... Um, like a PDF document as well. You've got your standard gear list. I go into all of that, how to be practical with that. And also a big one is choosing your lo your location, which when you want to go beach, beach fishing, not, not uh, sorry, I didn't mean to say beach fishing, but beach fishing. Um, choosing your location is a big one. So, Rogers Fishing Membership, how much does it cost to be a member? Essentially what I'm... Uh, Charging people is $19.90 a month to be a member of Rogers Fishing. There's no locking contract and you have instant access to all of the things that I've just mentioned, the fishing courses and the ongoing coaching and the private members community. Now that beach fishing course that I just showed you, the beach fishing masterclass, I actually sell that for $179. So people can buy that 15 video course for $179. But when you join Rogers Fishing, you have access to that in the first month. So technically, you could become a member, do the whole course, and then leave at the end of the month and only spend 20 bucks when the course actually sells for $179.
And it's the same thing with the Beach Worming Masterclass. I sell that for $79 and people have been buying that for the last few years. But you've got instant access to that as well. So really, um, I've tried to make it as easy and as low cost as possible. But, you know, obviously, you know, this is, you know, I think this, but, you know, if I was in your position, if I was a beginner, or even if I was someone that uh, has a certain amount of fishing knowledge, for a small investment, you could just totally fast track your whole fishing experience. And not only that, but become part of a, a community of like-minded fishermen, just down-to-earth people who want to enjoy their fishing and help each other. I'm looking. I'm really looking forward to that part of it. Uh, you know, being part of that community, and so I'll be involved in the community. I'll be a member of the community just like you. So I'll be making posts and also answering people's questions. But it'll be a place where we can all help each other. And you know, even if you were a member for twelve months, you know what's that? Two hundred and forty dollars for a year. Man, you're going to get so much out of it. And yeah, what can I say? So now, at this point, we're going to move into our live Q&A. So I'm going to switch over and come back onto the screen. So thank you so much for watching this training. And I'm looking forward to meeting you in a few seconds. Can you see me? Am I back? I think so. I hope so. Hey, look, so good to see so many people in the in the chat. It's fantastic. So I'm just going to catch my breath. Now, I've got some questions here that people put in during the week uh, by email. So I'm going to answer some of those questions. And I've also been taking some notes from the chat uh, during the video. Okay. So, oh, there you go. Rare Aussie. G'day. G'day, mate. How are you doing? I can see that picture of you with your black hat. <laughs> Classic. Tobias Riemann. Awesome. Very cool. So um, anyway, I've got these questions here uh, that people have put in during the week, so I'm going to answer a few of those. There's Ken. Um, and like I said in the beginning, I'm just going to just hang here until um, people stop asking me questions, basically. Okay. Um, the first question I'm going to answer is from a guy named Tony Jenner. I'm not sure if Tony's here tonight, but his question was, what colour hooks are best to use for beach fishing, silver, red or bronze? My personal opinion is it doesn't make any difference. Because personally, I don't think a fish even knows what a hook is. <laughs> so, <laughs> fair dinkum. Because, you know... Fish aren't that smart. I mean, it just looks, it could be like a bit of red weed or if a hook's black, it's just like a bit of black stuff on the bottom. They don't know what it is. So I wouldn't be bothered about the color of hooks. I don't think it makes any difference. And then he also says, why is the eye turned in on some hooks and turned out on others? <laughs> well, that's actually something I don't know the answer to that. So if someone else in the chat knows the answer to that, perhaps they could put that in there. Although I do know, um, if you are like that lace, the, the video I put up last Tuesday, a hook with a straight eye wouldn't work on that um, deadliest rig because it wouldn't sit right on the wire. You'd need to have the, the bent part. So that's why I use those suicide hooks on that particular rig. Okay, now I've got a question from Brian Krauss. He says, the best rods and reels for beach fishing, spinning reels or alvey? Okay, well, there are obviously two different things. I've, I've fished with Alvi reels all my life, um, and mainly off the, off the rocks. I absolutely love Alvis for certain applications. Um, there's just nothing like them for certain things. Um, I think off the beach, I'd probably prefer a spinning reel because of the low um, ratio of the Alvi, because it's a one-to-one -one ratio when you're winding an Alvi. Uh, it's a slow retrieve. That's not the end of the world. Um, but I think for beach fishing, you know, 
a thread line or a spinning reel is pretty good, but certainly not, not a problem. I know that up in Queensland, a lot of people use alvies off the beach. I guess the benefits are there that they have a very large line capacity. Um, you can cast a long way with an alvy. I can cast probably 100 metres. with a. I can cast a fully baited rig 100 metres with an alvy reel. Okay, next question, quest, question, question. John Craig. John says, a good beach rig for whiting. So very quickly, the standard whiting rig has always been a running sinker on your main line with a leader down to a long shank uh, hook. Um, I use larger long shank hooks than most people. Um, a lot of people use like a size one or a size two for whiting, but I, I go for a larger hook and I like to put a larger worm bait on when I'm using worms because you potentially could catch a mulloway if you've got a better size bait. And I found it doesn't impact the whiting. You still catch small whiting, but sometimes you catch really big whiting doing that. But um, a good friend of mine on the northern beaches who catches a lot of whiting, he fishes a paternoster rig with a star sinker on the bottom and he has two droppers coming off it. So that's a fixed sinker um, and fixed leaders. So you wouldn't necessarily think that that kind of doesn't, you'd think that's not kind of um, that sensitive for the fish. But I know this particular guy absolutely brains the whiting. Um, and there used to be a thought that it's better when you throw your bait out if it actually moves a bit with the current because you're covering ground on the beach. But I know this friend of mine, Having fished that way for many years, he just sticks to the Paternoster rig now and catches, you know, he, he's happy for his bait to sit in one spot. He's not so concerned about it moving around. So, okay, so just looking at the chat here, Samuel Powell, is Narrawally Beach up the north end any good for Brimmy? I reckon, I haven't fished it myself, Sam, but I was down there the other day having a look um, and I like the look of it. Absolutely, I reckon, 100%. Okay, so now I've got another guy here by the name of Trevor. Um, and Trevor, I'll just read what Trevor says. He says, mate, he said, not really a question, but can I respectfully request that part of the session is we encourage fishers to only take from the beach what they need and to take any rubbish that they have or, or see from the beach with them. With more potential beach fishos after your tutorial, we need to look after our fish and our sand. Thank you, sir. Yeah, 100%. I agree. I often do that if I see rubbish down the beach. Um, I pick it up and take it home with me. And also, you know, I really only mainly keep what I can eat. Um, I do know my neighbour is not a fisherman. and They love fish, so I often like to fillet some fish and give them a parcel. And they love that. So I do that, um, but yeah, I mean, and we, we, we tend to eat all of the fish that we catch. <clears throat> I know that my wife doesn't get very excited if I waste fish. She gets angry about that. So um, we don't waste fish. Okay, so there's another comment from a guy by the name of Paul Victor. He says, I have never been successful catching a fish with a lure. Do you prefer lures or bait? I just would simply say this is just two different things. I mean, obviously, most beach fishing is done with bait. Um, the type of lure fishing, I know you can fish for flathead with soft plastics off the beach, uh, but that's more around the months of February, February, March, April, which is when the flathead, you seem to get a lot of flathead on the beaches. They come out of the rivers at the, at the end of February and beginning of March. They migrate back out of the rivers onto the beaches and... That's when you can get some really good flathead catches on the beaches. So um, also, I'm going to be targeting, targeting Mulloway with lures off the beaches this season. I'm all set up for it, so I'm going to be doing a bit of that. So as I'm doing that, I will uh, be making some videos and passing on everything that I, you know, every little detail about that. So I'll be using hard bodies and large soft plastics, and I have a particular strategy that I have in mind for that um, and of course you can flick lures at Taylor 
but that's kind of really more, and tailor and salmon, but that's kind of really more when there are schools of fish around and you've got some lures in your bag and you whack a lure on and, and cast it out. Okay, look, I'm trying to get through these questions as quick as I can because I respect your time um, and you've already been on for a while. Okay, um, Craig Eels says, have you ever tried preserving unused pilchards by salt, curing them? If so, are they still an effective bait? Yes, I've done that um, and it does work. Yep, definitely. They're a bit tougher. I mean, you can buy them already salted, but salting pilchards is good. You just use that cheap home brand salt from the supermarket, uh, put them in the fridge, uh, or you can just put them straight in the freezer. Then I've got a question here from Andrew Wilmot. What do you consider to be the best type of sinkers to use when there is a strong current on the beach? I pretty much just use star sinkers nowadays. I used to use ball sinkers a lot. Um, but, you know, of course, when you've got current, ball sinkers are pretty useless because they just roll roll along with the current. Um, so I use star sinkers. I know there's those other ones which are kind of, what are they called? They're like a grappling sinker which have the um, bits of metal coming out of them. I believe they use those sinkers a lot in South Australia and Western Australia on some big, long stretches of beach where you can tend to get a lot of current. I find the star sinkers, for me, work pretty darn good. Um, even in a moderate current. If the current's just going crazy, well then even the star sinkers won't hold the bottom. You probably need those other ones with the metal or with the projections from them. Next question, Lawrence Atchison. G'day, Roger. What is the best way to preserve worms and pilchards? Do you rec recommend coloured rubbery beads in the rig setup? Do you fish with two rods for different fish on the beach? Okay, quickly... Um, I think, you know, the simplest method for worms is the salt method. You can use metho, but sprinkling them with a bit of salt, they work really well. Um, I don't bother with coloured beads when I fish for whiting. I don't know if they make much difference. Maybe someone might comment on that. And generally, I always take two rods to the beach because I have a, a rod that I'm holding and fishing, and then when I catch a small fish, I put it out as a live bait or I, I like to put a big bait out. I always like to have a rod with a set big bait in case I can hook a dewy while I'm there. So I prefer to have two rods when I go to the beach. Okay, another question from Cliff Mason. How do you add certain baits to a two-hook stinker, singer rig, stinger rig, that you talk about in the latest video? Uh, I actually had a lot of questions about that in the video. So I'm going to make a follow-up video to that video from last Tuesday um, where I actually show you exactly how I put the baits on that deadliest rig because it, it, you know there are differences to using that nylon coated wire as opposed to mono line. Okay, I can see Lee Wood says here buy non-iodized pool salt from Bunnings. Okay, yeah I know the ones because I've got a pool, they're big. Um, John C says do you make your own sinkers? Um, I used to years ago, but I, I don't really bother now. Okay, so one more question here, um, and then I'm going to go to the questions from the chat. Where did they go? Okay. Um, this guy, John Cashin, says he's new to beach fishing. Can I get beach worms around Phillip Island? Good old Phillip Island. I'm not 100% sure. I was down at Torquay. And I was talking to some guys in a fishing tackle shop at Torquay and asking them, do they catch beach worms in the Torquay area? And he really didn't have much information about beach worms down there. So, and I haven't tried myself. So, I mean, obviously Torquay is not the same area as Phillip Island, but I just think you're going to have to have a go and have a look because I haven't wormed there myself. So I can't really answer that question, although I'm just thinking out loud. I know they catch beach worms in South Australia, which is obviously further south and around the corner. So, I mean, if they catch them in South Australia, Australia, you'd think that you would have to get them there. I'm just looking at Carlos Ferreira, a nine-foot rod good for beach fishing. Carlos, you can certainly fish with a nine-foot rod. You could even fish with a six-foot rod in the right conditions, but... It's just helpful. I normally, all of my beach foot beach fishing rods would be the smallest ones would be 9 foot. My beach rods would be between 9 foot and 12 foot on average. Uh, okay. 
Tobias. Thanks for the live, Roger. It was really informative and helpful. I've got to get ready for school tomorrow. Okay, no worries. Thanks heaps, Tobias. I'll catch you later, mate. All right, getting to, on to some more questions. All right. Is there anyone who can answer Rob Matthews' question? Cyrax is asking for basics, basic tactics for targeting flathead at the beach. Um, Cyrax, a fantastic bait for flathead, is the humble pilchard, either a half pilchard or a whole pilchard. Just on a um, just a basic running rig with a running sinker. You know what? You could even have your sinker going straight to the hook, uh, or just have a short leader. But flathead, um, they also follow scent. They respond to burley. And I've caught lots of flathead off the beach on pilchards. And just another little tip there, Cyrax, is fish low tide. Because, you know, all of the gutters are concentrated at low tide. And that's where the fish are going to be. They're going to be off the edge of the sandbars in the edge of that deep water. And so there's a bit of a tip there. Fish low tide and use pilchards. Okay. Um, Resi, yeah, yeah, this is being recorded, so um, you can watch this again tomorrow. I'm sorry about that, mate. Um, I wasn't sure, I didn't even think about Queensland time and New South Wales time, or I just figured I, I put it in for YouTube to start at 7 pm. So, my apologies for that. Okay, so Chris Billington had a question How to find more beach fish, Taylor and Mulloway? Perth, WA, how to find more beach fish. Well, Ellis, I've got a video coming up that I'm hoping to finish in the next few weeks, which I'm not going to tell it all you all about it now because this particular video, no one talks about it. Um, and it's a practice that I do, and it's an absolute game changer for beach fishing. The video that I put up, it's, you know, you just don't hear about it and it's going to be special and I'm quite sure that that particular video is going to have a massive impact on a lot of fishermen. But I know I'm being secretive about it now, but I don't want to spill the beans before I come out with that, but that will help you with what you're asking. <laughs> so that'll be cool. I'm really excited about that video. This is something I do, believe it or not, I've in all my beach fishing, I have never seen another fisherman do it. Never witnessed another fisherman do it. I do know of some champion beach fishermen who practice this, and I do know there are other fishermen who do it, but I've never actually seen anyone else do it when I've been fishing. So I'm going to be releasing that very shortly. Okay, Lee Wood. Times to fish. Do you rule out between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. off the beach? Um, I don't rule it out if the conditions are overcast. If it's a bright sunny day and the water's crystal clear, um, it's not so good. I've had some situations where I fished in a place one day, uh, caught a heap of whiting, really good whiting, and gone down the following day on the, on the same tide, one hour later than the previous day, but the following day has been a bright sunny day and not even lost a bait. I don't know whether that's because the whiting moved off the beach, but it was the same gutter, same spot, same everything. Never caught a fish. But in general, I like, I like fishing in overcast conditions. I don't mind the rain. The rain doesn't bother the fish. I don't even, a little bit of wind's okay, but when you've got a bit of rain and just a little bit of ruffling on the water surface, the fish are less timid. So I like doing that. Okay. Okay, Rare Aussie says, I find low tide is good for dew around Wollongong and further south. Excellent. That's great. Okay, Ellis Billington. Okay, thanks, Ellis. Okay, back to another question. Sunny Kim, safe fishing spots for taking kids fishing in Sydney? It's a bit of a broad question. Um, sunny, the beach is very safe. You know, what we've been talking about tonight. 
you can certainly fish with, you know, obviously you're not going to let your kids run out into the surf, but but the beach is a very safe place to fish. Also lakes, uh, depends on where you live in Sydney, on the northern beaches or uh, the south side, but there's some fantastic options around Sydney. But uh, I won't go into the rest of that now. Okay. <clears throat> What have we got here? Someone just said that there's lots of tryhards in the chat. <laughs> well, that's good if there's lots of tryhards because you're having you're trying hard, which is awesome. But you know, I just think you know probably in thinking about that, part of the difference is just a bit of fine tuning in your preparation, and you and you spend less, you waste less time. If you focus a little bit more on fishing the premium conditions and just being a bit more targeted in what you do, you'll have more success. But anyway, hopefully we can talk about that further down the track. Michael Burak says, what hook size? But we need to clarify. It depends on what you're fishing for. Kevin Kelly really struggles with what the fish and what type, location, time and tide. Yeah, it's a big question. I can't answer that now. It'd take too long. Sorry about that, buddy. Leslie Watson, what months on the south coast for whiting? I think it's similar to Sydney, the months on the south coast for whiting, uh, which is more summer. So really starting now, uh, November, and then flowing through um, in the warmer months, November, December, January, February, March, I would say is the best time. Fred Scharf says, does a lightning storm affect your fishing results? Only if you stick it up in the air and get electrocuted. But um, I don't think I'd be standing out in a lightning storm holding on to a fishing rod, sticking it up in the air anyway. Good on you, Fred. Uh, Lee Wood, morning, dusk. Do you think they are the best times? Yeah, in general. Yeah, they are. But, you know, I love an overcast day especially if you've got some time and you've got the day off and it's a little bit rainy on all the fair weather fishermen stay inside it's a great time okay turning over the page all right just gonna look in the chat again fuzzy hello been waiting all day big shout out shout out from south africa oh awesome g'day fuzzy how are you mate south africa just want to say South African beaches look so like Australian beaches. They're very, very similar. I have been to South Africa. I've been to Jeffreys Bay. And I noticed that all the vegetation on the beaches there, it's almost, it's the same as we get here in Australia. But South Africa's epic. Um, okay. And I'm uh, sorry, I just missed that bit about surfers on the northern beaches. You know what? I've caught lots of fish around surfers. When I was making one of my beachworming videos, it was in the morning, it was about nine o'clock, so the sun was nice and high. There was a bunch of surfers out in the water. I was catching some worms and chucking them out, and I, I was trying to film a video making uh, how to catch beachworms, but every time I threw my line in the water, I had a fish. And in the end, I just had to not, I, had, I stopped fishing because I, I couldn't make the video. <laughs> so it happens. Okay. Okay, I moved from fishing around South Coast, New South Wales to Coffs. So I had to change a lot of tactics. Oh, okay, interesting. Okay, Lee Wood, Ray, don't worry about the surface. Common sense on their behalf does not come into it. Ellis, yeah, careful when the lightning storms. All right, where are we here? Cyrax, basic ta tactics for targeting flathead. Okay, well, I've already answered that question. Shazko asked a question about lures. I've talked about that a little bit. Um, Sian Badenhurst, best northern beaches for Mulloway, Sydney northern beaches. Okay. Well, there's some really good Mulloway beaches on the northern beaches. You'll actually catch them on every beach from Manly to Palm Beach. But Long Reef is very good for Mulloway. Uh, the Narrabeen stretch is well known as a Mulloway spot. Um, Little Narrabeen, which is called Taramedda Beach, 
it's only a very small beach, but that's a, a good beach for Mulloway. Moving north, uh, Bungan Beach is very productive. South Newport is also the south of the pipe on Newport is an epic spot. Um, and then Palm Beach is also a popular spot, the northern half of Palm Beach. So there's a few spots for you on the northern beaches for Mulloway. Um, Lee Wood, should we stop using stainless steel hooks as they don't corrode and cause issues when fish hooks up on the beach? Possibly. I mean, I don't use stainless steel hooks myself, but I haven't really thought about that. But yeah, I mean, if they just remain in the environment, hooks that rust would probably be, be better. Ryan Seven, thanks for your time, Roger. It's a pleasure, mate. No problems. The Wagga Bloat, if you're still here, um, great to see you. And what have we got here? Okay, rogersfishing.com.au. Oh, that's a mistake. You can see on my screen there it says rogersfishing.com.au. It's actually just rogersfishing.com. So that's my mistake. Just keep thinking about the AU. So, yeah, my new website, which is live as of now, uh, uh, new, basically it's a fishing club, Rogers Fishing. It's a fishing club with benefits, <laughs> essentially. Um, you know, because you get to join there and, you know, I'll be um, sharing everything I know, creating new material, making videos, having the Zooms, um, and... Um, enjoying making friends through the community so looking forward to it okay so what have i got here ryan seven is concerned about any ecological impact of using methylated spirits to cure worms ryan i think that's so it would be so negligible i, I don't think it's going to make any impact when you consider the time actually when you um when you do beach worms with methylated spirits, you don't use straight metho. I'm just trying to think. I think it might be, what is it, one part metho to about four parts water. So it's only a bit of methylated spirits in water. Yeah, so I don't think that matters. All right. Well, I've got to the end of the questions that I'd written down from before. So now I'm just going to look at the chat. Um, Ray, Le, how do you pronounce your surname, Ray? Ray Lapier. Lots of Northern Beaches people here. Great to know there'll be others going through the same journey as me. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Ryan. Brian Krauss, with Taylor, do you think it's better to have the bait weighted and on the bottom or weightless in the water column? Um, off the beach, just use a sinker. I fish off the rocks a lot with unweighted baits. Uh, I fish off the rocks various different methods, but I love fishing with an unweighted pilchard off the rocks and getting a burly trail going. Uh, that's one of my great loves. It's, it's awesome. I'm going to make some videos on that when time permits. Lee Wood says, catching salmon, where the best throw your line in gutters close to the beach or do you cast line into whitewater adjacent? I think casting your bait into the whitewater adjacent to the gutters is, is good. Because salmon are looking for small fish and small fish try to hide from the big fish and they try to hide in the white water. So that's why the big fish in the Mulloway, they patrol and they head up and they even go right up into the white water looking for small fish. How are you going to sell merchandise? I haven't even thought about that. Uh, nailed pronunciation. Oh, thanks, mate. That's awesome. Thanks, Ray. Kevin Kelly, thanks for your time, Roger. Yeah, thanks heaps, Callum. Uh, Ke Kellen, Kevin. The Wagga bloke. Almost all of New South Wales up into Rainbow Beach in Queensland are good for Jewfish. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they are everywhere. It's amazing. You know, if you actually, it's like I was talking about in the lesson about you get what you aim for. That's definitely the case with Mulloway. If you focus on it, you get results. Okay, last chance for questions all. How long have we been going? Okay, what time's that? 8.30, fair dinkum. Oh no, that's not that late. All right, 
Cool. All right. Well, I'll just wait here for a, a couple more moments and um, answer some more questions if they come up. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you all soon. And just remember that um, thank you, Margaret. Uh, thank you for your time as well. And remember that I'm closing Roger's Fishing Membership in 48 hours. The main reason for that is because this is a new thing, I want to be able to give my time to people in the best possible way. And if I end up with too many people initially, um, yeah, I'm just not quite sure how to handle that. So I'm just going to have the doors open for 48 hours and that way I can um, give you my best um, for any of you who would like to join Rogers Fishing. Um, yeah, I can give you the best value. And undoubtedly, I will be doing another intake sometime before Christmas. But I'm just going to have this one this week and then I'll start uh, the relationship with those of you who join. Okay, Samuel, thanks, Sam. Fuzzy, thanks. Okay, Rare House, I found a big silver fox plastic. A very good reach. Thanks for sharing, Roger. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, Brendo's Adventures. Um, spotting gutters. It's actually not hard to spot gutters, Brendo's. I just, it's so easy. I mean, it would be great if I could be at the beach with you and, and point it out, but. I mean, look, I've said in one of my videos, it's very easy to tell where the shallow areas are and the deep areas are on a beach. I mean, the shallow areas are where the waves break. It's very obvious. And the deep areas are where the waves don't break. And a gutter is a deeper area of water where the waves don't break. Um, that's the simplest explanation of it. Um, what do you think about a f using a float at the beach? I, don't, I think that doesn't happen very much. Okay, cool. I can look at that. Um, uh, okay, what are my thoughts on drone fishing? I have not ventured into that yet. I think that's another specialised thing. It depends on what you're targeting. Obviously, if you're putting using a drone, um, that could be used for snapper fishing, um, and it could be used for putting large baits out for sharks or positioning yourself um, in some really good water for Mulloway if it's not close to the beach. But things like brim and whiting and fish that uh, are feeding in the wash, you wouldn't need a drone. Okay, Trent, does a big swell impact fishing prospects? Yes, it does. Um, because in a big swell, the there's so much water movement on the beach and you have a lot of problems with drag and current. So I... You know, I mean, look, you can get in a big swell, you can hide from a big swell in a protected corner of a beach. So there are certainly places, even where I live, there's lots of options in big swells. But you know, I probably would stick to, like I said, you know, a swell about a metre. OK, where are we? Rob Matthews, great live stream debut, Roger. Thanks heaps, mate. Thanks for the encouragement. Yeah, first time I've ever done this. So um, I just had to jump in the deep end. Dr. Ransom, do you eat shovel nose shark? I've never tried it. Have you? Have you? <laughs> Andy Theo, do you burly off the beach? How many rods do you use off the beach? Um, simple answer is yes, I do. And I generally take two rods. Resi inspections, what size hook do you use for flathead? If I'm using a single hook off the beach and a half pilchard bait, look, a 4.0 hook, 4.5.0. I wouldn't go bigger than a 5 -0, 4 or 5 -0. Rare Aussie, look for the dark water for gutters too. Yeah, that's it. The light, the light water, obviously you can see the sand bottom. Michael Everton, greetings from Port Elizabeth. Oh, awesome. So good to hear from you. We do have a great coastline with a great variety of shore rock surf angling species. Yeah, maybe I'll get there one day. Um, I know you've got lots of big cob over there and uh, other species. And you fish for tailor, which you call shad. Um, what else do you catch? Brendo's adventures. Usually I'll find them at low tide and come back later. Okay. Okay, thanks, Cyrax. Much appreciated. Thanks, Lee. 
Fuzzy, Roger, when can we expect an action video? Very soon. To see you in action. Ah. <laughs> I'm just trying to think, what do you mean? Is it, you mean like, a, like a, a live video? Is that what you mean by an action video? Like, um, can you clarif clarify? Um, okay, fishing with Elion, shark fishing off the beach. Any tips? I don't normally focus on sharks because they're not kind of my, uh, from an eating point of view. Um, I do catch sharks when I'm fishing for other things. Lee Wood, do you get snapper off the beach or are they? You can, yep, definitely. I've caught snapper off the beach at Long Reef in Sydney in front of the lagoon. Um, certain time, actually, that was March, April. But, um, yeah, interesting. Um, because there's reef close in or near the bommy at Long Reef is a good spot. Ellis, when is the next video coming out? Want to see it before next weekend where I'm heading to the wedge north of Perth for two nights. Uh, the video I was talking about is about three weeks away or so. I have a video coming out next Tuesday, which is a boat-related video. It's on teaching people how to launch and retrieve their boat. But my other beach fishing video, I'm still making it, and it won't be ready in the next week. I'm sorry about that. Michael, what would you recommend for a PFD? I'll get back to you on that one too, Michael. Um, can't answer that question yet. Possibly by next week. The Wagga Bloke, thank you. Thanks, uh, mate. Dr. Jennings, can't wait to use these tips when I get back to Fraser. Cheers, Roger. Cool. Fuzzy. A live video seeing you fishing. Okay, cool. I haven't done that yet. So, um, yeah. Uh, it's just an... I'm learning with... <laughs> I'm learning with this whole thing, Fuzzy. You know, uh, you know, all this technology is new to me. <laughs> He's talking about the action video. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. But it's like... You know, yeah, getting down the beach, I suppose. Uh, sometimes when I'm down the beach, Fuzzy, I get distracted because I just get focused on the fishing and uh, forget that, you know, so I'd have to be aware that there are other people with me. But I, I definitely want to do that. So, yeah. S-L-A-F-C-O-G. Hey, Roger, can you give me a shout-out? Yep. G'day, buddy. I'm not, not quite sure what S-L-A-F-C-O-G means. Sam Powell, can you catch Bonito off the beach? I don't think I've ever caught one, Sam, but I've caught plenty off the rocks. Enzo Cadelli, what is the best way to dispatch fish? Enzo, without sounding too crude, I'd use my sharp knife, sharp knife and I'd just cut their throat and let them bleed out quickly. It's just the way it is. you know. Um, it's pretty humane because they, they die when they bleed out within a couple of minutes. Bust up stonkers. Hey, Roger, what pound line is best for Jewfish, mainline and leader? I use 15 kilo. I reckon you can pretty much land anything on 15 kilo line. I've caught um, Big Mulloway on lighter line than that. Ken Robinson, what's the correct website address? Thanks, Ken. Uh, we are, actually have addressed that once already. It's rogersfishing.com. Sorry about that. That was my big blooper when I created this um, thing for the video. But, yeah, not Rogers Fish, it's rogersfishing.com. Okay, Trevor Vivian. Is it legal to run a treble under a three-gang tailor rig in New South Wales? Trevor, I don't know about that. Um, I don't think it's really that necessary, you know. Um, you don't have any issues hooking tailor with ganged hooks. So, yeah, I'm not sure. I'll have to ask. I'll try and remember that, Trevor. Um, Fred Schaff, what are some common mistakes beach worming? Mm. There are two main areas that people struggle with beach worming, and that's their approach to the beach worm with the bait because they're too heavy handed and they whack it over the head. Uh, the other whole area is the actual grabbing of the worm. Um, but, you know, if you just watch me doing it on some of my videos, whenever I take people for a beach worming lesson, I just let them watch me for a little while. What's that? Yes. And um, 
yeah, there's worming videos at rogersfishing.com. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. The Wagga bloke, 20 to 30 pound line is a good all-rounder. Yeah, absolutely. Totally agree. Rezzy, great info as usual. Thank you. Yeah, thanks heaps, Rezzy. Um, whatever your name is. Um, Wayne Graphos. Hey, hi, Roger. Looking to buy medium beach rod. Can you recommend a brand, wrap, and length? Um, the classic rod we used to get was a 7144. So that's a 7 wrap, 144 inches, which is 12 feet. So I can re recommend a 7144. Really good. <laughs> Sorry, I'm being distracted. CD. Great info as, as always. Thanks, Roger. Thanks, mate. Wagga bloke. A good all-round beach ride is five wrap. Mm, that's interesting. That's pretty solid, isn't it? Actually, no, that's not as heavy. Less wraps. Sorry about that. Cool. Okay. Michael Burak. Have to go all the best. Thanks, mate. Mr. Ransom. What's your favorite fishing boat? Oh, man, that's a broad question as well. I currently have a Quintrex Renegade 4, 420 and I'm very happy with it because it really, in getting that boat, I had a specific requirement. I wanted to be able to fish in the lake near where I live, but I also wanted to go out in the ocean. So it was kind of, I didn't want a full on deep sea boat, but I wanted a boat with the capability to go out. So, and, and I wanted something that was not too big. And actually the 420 is a really good size, very happy with it. I used to own a Sea Devil, which is a fiberglass boat years ago. But yeah, I'm running with the Renegade 420 at the moment. Fuzzy. Oh, thanks Fuzzy. He says, your video on beach sandbanks and gullies cuts so on improved my fishing a lot. Awesome, bud. Have to run. Give me a shout out when you come to South Africa. I like to take you shark fishing. Cool. Man, if I get that opportunity, Fuzzy, that would be awesome. Okay, so, um, oh, well, I wonder if that worked. Oh, there you go. We, we fixed it. Um, Sam, so excited to see where your website and videos go. Definitely the best tutorials out there for sure. Thanks heaps, mate. Noah, Noah Saidi. I love your beach worming videos. What would you say is the best fish to catch with them? Beach worms are a good old round bait for a variety of species, but you mainly catch whiting, brim, and salmon, and some mulloway occasionally. Depending on where you fish, the far north coast of New South Wales seems to be a lot more productive on beach worms for mulloway from about Port Macquarie north, I believe, uh, Crescent Head area, uh, up to... I Luca. Okay, MT7144, brilliant. Built many, best all rounder for beach and rock. Yep. The Wagga, Wagga bloke, brilliant. Ray is back. Just got a boat recently and find it hard to find fish. Any tips or locations around Middle Harbour? Uh, Middle Harbour is a great area. There's some really good fishing in Middle Harbour. Um, one of the keys to Middle Harbour is to, I mean, as in a lot of places, to fish the edge of the reef and the sand. Where you've got areas of reef, um, if you're able to anchor your boat on the edge of the reef and the sand and get a burly trail going and fish light with very little sinker in the burly trail, you can have a lot of fun and catch a variety of fish doing that. You can certainly do that more over towards the manly side, up that over that way. Um, and even up at, oh, what's it called? Um, up towards the Roseville Bridge, up the back of Middle Harbour is pretty good. Okay. Ray, just got a boat recently. Yep, just, you asked, I just answered that question. Linda, great knowledge and teaching. Thank you. Thanks heaps, Linda. Much appreciated. Look forward to seeing you um, next time I do one of these. I'm not sure when that will be, but there will be another one before too long. 
Harrington S. Just signed up for the website, Roger. It's looking good. Oh, thanks heaps, mate. Woohoo! Awesome. I guess I'll be um, getting to know a little bit more about you. That'll be great. Leslie Watson. What burly off the beach for whiting and brim? Don't know that you can burly for whiting that much. But you can certainly burly for brim. Pilchards are a good burly because they have a great oily scent. Okay, Resi's back. Shows where to brain spike. My name is Les. Thank you. Oh, thanks, mate. Thanks, Les. Okay. Coco Charlie, I've seen you before. Hi, Roger. Great live feed. Thanks, Coco. Yeah, and I've seen you. Um, I've answered some of your questions on some of my videos in the past. Hi. How are you? Here I, I'm doing this from obviously from my place. I live at uh, Aladella on the south coast. Amazing place down here. And um, but I've I mean I fished the northern beaches all my life up until recently, so that was my home. So rare Aussie, you were building rods for a tackle shop. Wow, cool. I haven't built many rods in my life. I've mainly bought them. I've built a few, but um, yeah, I've been more of a buyer than a maker. Okay, the Wagga bloke. Oh, it's still good to see that um, there's quite a, few, quite a few of you still in the chat. So should I keep talking or will we sign off for the evening? That's the question. <clears throat> Keep going. Um, okay. Well, I'm pretty excited about this coming season because um, tomorrow is the 1st of November and I've been looking at the tides. How old am I? It's my birthday this month and I'll be 61. So 60 at the moment. A very young 60, <laughs> a very adventurous 60. Plan to be having lots of adventures for a long time. Okay, wow, bounty. Keep going. Okay. Noah, do you know the best time to catch Taylor off the beach? Well, Noah, just in recent times, I have found, it's a bit of a tip for you, Noah, uh, they seem to other, unless they were schooling, not till, not till it's dark after the sun has gone down is the best time and then when it's fully dark Taylor definitely come on in the dark Bounty Gaming 46 I just joined well nice to meet you Bounty I look forward to um, seeing you inside Rogers Fishing which will be fantastic I've been looking forward to this part of it because um, yeah, it'd be awesome to build a really solid fishing community. It would be fantastic. It'd be really cool. Okay. Kings around the boys in open water in the harbour. I've done a lot of kingfish fishing off Long Reef, but not a lot in the harbour. Although I know that there's, there's even pro fishermen who take people out or well, when I say fishing guides in Sydney Harbour who take people out and um, target kingfish, just like on Pitwater as well. Okay. Rare Aussie, I built just one or two. What, one or two hundred or more maybe. Ken Robinson, Roger, what is a great brim fishing outfit for beginners? Ken, you could use the rod that I talked about in this teaching. But I would just use, like I suggested, possibly using a leader. I mean, have your 20-pound mono mainline and use a fluorocarbon leader of about 12-pound on a basic running rig. Would be good. Thanks a lot, Noah. If you're heading off, I'll catch you soon. Okay, Bounty Gaming. I was just at BCF, and I need to know so you know what the goes, what, the, what a GS9 is. I need to know so you know what a GS9 is. Okay. All right. 
<laughs> wow, okay. Let me have a look here. What uh, okay, all right, I'm just looking back at these previous comments. Okay, what do you mean about the GS9, um, Bowdy? What do you need to know about that? Um, thanks, the Wagga bloke, for your encouragement. Carlos, you're still there, Carlos. Roger, I'm trying to reach your website. You know why? Because I had the wrong address on before. It's actually just rogersfishing.com. I'd put .au on there. So you've probably tried .com.au, but just go to rogersfishing.com. Fair dinkum. Wow. Rare Aussie, a thousand. Wow. Mate, I used to be a butcher. I did my apprenticeship as a butcher when I left school and I was in a busy butcher shop. Um, we had 12 butchers and we used to churn out the sausages and I made so many sausages, I used to make sausages in my sleep. That sounds bad, doesn't it? But <laughs> Okay. Uh, Carlos, what's going on, Carlos? Okay, yeah, yeah, did it. Wow, cool. Rare Aussie. Oh, cool. All right. All right. Wow. Uh, Rare Aussie, what is your name? Are you able to put that on the chat? Your first name? And then we've got Mesmus9. Rogers fishing not working. It's because I made it. It's my fault. Schoolboy error. It's rogersfishing.com. If you look at the screen now, I had put an AU on it before, which is wrong. So, sorry about that. Hopefully that hasn't stuffed too many people up. Okay. Rosie mate. Rousey mate. I can't get on either. Okay. Um, it's working. It's working. Yeah. So, yeah, rogersfishing.com. Just remove the AU and you'll be able to get on. Awesome. Okay, rare Aussie. Mick. Okay, awesome. Thanks, Mick. Thanks for that, mate. And whereabouts um, are you lo you located, Mick? Uh, what part of Australia are Australia are you? Oh, I think you might have mentioned it early earlier in the chat. I just can't remember. Okay, Mesmus. It's still not working. I wonder why you're having trouble. Try refreshing. Hmm? Try refreshing the browser. Um, try refreshing your browser, Mesmus. Bounty, where do you fish at Narrabeen? I lived uh, on Narrabeen Lake. I grew up on Narrabeen Lake. We had a waterfront property. And when I was 12 years old, I had my first tinny. So I never got any homework done. The only homework I did was fishing. But it was pretty awesome. So I, I, I've caught a lot of fish in Narrabeen Lake. And it's still a, an awesome producer. But uh, Narrabeen Beach, uh, I fished all along Narrabeen Beach. It just would depend on the, the, the structure and the gutters. Although right up near the entrance of the lake in front of the surf club, I probably fished there more than anywhere else. Because you've got the entrance of the lake there and you've got all that bait coming in and out. You've got prawns, a little mullet and everything coming out of the lake and... It's, it's a gun mulloway spot there, but it's a great whiting spot in summer. Just an epic whiting spot there. Um, also, I was lasting about the Daiwa GS9 reel. Okay. Okay, well, I'm not familiar with the Daiwa GS9 reel, so um, I'll take a note. Where's a pen? I've got a pen. Just write that down. Daiwa. Uh, G S nine. I used to be the president of a fishing club, and uh, I knew the, uh, the 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 boss at Daiwa 
in Brookvale and he sponsored our fishing club for a number of years. So Daiwa sponsored the club and I had uh, actually ran a fishing competition on Pitwater for the general public and Daiwa sponsored that. Mesmus, uh, Cameron Jones, dot com, website not working. Why would that be? I will test it from my end. It's working on my Okay, where's my, my, I don't have my phone with me. I, I pers purposely kept it away so that I wouldn't get any calls during this um, live. Yeah, so just, uh, just try again, rogersfishing.com or refresh. Just refresh the browser and try again. Okay, Ray, site works for me. Thanks, Ray. Thanks, Ray, just for confirming that. By the way, Roger, I love your recent video about the wire leader. Harrington, Roger, have you ever fished at Newport? Yep, I love Newport. It's a great spot, the south end of Newport. Excellent. Um, just signed up, Digger. Awesome. Who's that? The Wagga bloke. Ew. We need good people like the Wagga bloke. Isaac Dart. Hey, hey, Isaac. How are you, mate? Do you teach on spearfishing, Roger? Um, no. Nah. <laughs> I, I like spearfishing, though. Um, I've done a little bit, uh, although at the moment I'm kind of more into, into diving for lobsters and abalone. My wife wants me to be a good lobster diver because she loves lobsters. Anyways, uh, I'm having a go. Rosie, mate, put www before the address. <laughs> cool. Okay, resi inspections. Coated though, stainless steel, I've got a 38 pound to try. Okay, that sounds pretty good to me. Give that a go. Oh, cool. Thanks, Rare Rosie. Leslie Watson just signed up. Awesome. Site working. Thanks, Isaac. Good to see you, mate. That sounds good. Thanks, the Wagga bloke. All right, I'm just going to take a breath. I think tomorrow is going to be a pretty exciting morning for me to jump on that website and meet some new people. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. Noah, have you ever fished near Foster? I've fished Seal Rocks area a little bit, Lighthouse Beach and Treachery Beach. Haven't really fished at Foster, but it's an oh, epic place. With the, with the um, lake there, entra lake's entrance, Tun Curry. If so, what would you recommend for beach fishing near there? Everything we've been talking about tonight will apply, you know, right along the coast. You know, what I was talking about, you know, if you do your homework, you eliminate time wasting. And you uh, certainly increase your success rate. You know, over the years, Obviously, I fish with lots of guys, but some guys have got more enthusiasm than they do common sense. <laughs> like, they don't know when to pull the plug. Fair dinkum. You know, I don't muck around now. You know, if I get down there and if I don't like the look of it, I will up and move to a different spot. I would rather waste half an hour and move to a better location. Noah. Yep, okay. Sam, my wife just gave me an early Christmas present. Cool. How awesome. That's fantastic. Foster is brilliant in the lake for Big Brim. Oh, man. Yeah, that, that's a big lake, isn't it, Mick? That's a big lake. Uh, I know, actually, you know, when you, if you walk across the bridge there, you often you can just see the flathead lying down there in the water under the bridge. Lee Wood, thanks, Roger, for a great night. We'll sign up tomorrow and see how we go. Okay, cool. All right, thanks, Lee. All right. Well, we've been going for um, nearly two hours. So that's a while. 
Aussie Nebula. Thanks for the Q&A, Roger. I'm late as usual, but enjoying the chat. Cheers. Yeah, thanks heaps, Mr. Nebula. Thanks, Resi. Okay. What have we got here? I'm just going to go back in the chat. Just look at a couple of things. Okay. Cool. Hey, look, Resi, I, um, the chat was moving too quickly and I missed your bit about that wire you bought at BCF. I, um, I'd be interested to get some of that. Because I found that the wire that I've used, it, it does, you know, as I mentioned, it does kink a little bit. Not that that's a major deal, but, you know, if there's better brand wire around, we'll have to look into that. Okay. Heading back down the bottom of the chat. Okay. Bob B, should you fish near rocks on the beach at times? Absolutely, Bob. That's one of my things. I like to fish in the corner of a beach, you know, even only 20 metres from the rocks because you get a lot of other species and that's the sort of place you'll catch snapper off the beach because you're on the edge of the beach and uh, the rocks and the sand. And Mulloway like to patrol that edge. So if you've got a hole or a gutter right at the end of a beach, it's a really good place to fish. Brian, all the best, Roger. Much appreciated. Yeah, thanks heaps, mate. Uh, Perth. I've got quite a few family in Perth, although it's been a long time. There's quite a few Osbournes in the Perth area. Praveen, site's working fine for me. Awesome. Thanks heaps, mate. Fred, Fred can't wait to pull all your tips into practice and catch some fish with my mate Ken at Lake Macquarie. Yeah, I mean Lake Macquarie, what a, that's the biggest lake I think in the Southern Hemisphere, just about. Thanks a lot, Noah. I hope to meet you again. Okay, awesome. Thanks heaps, Resi. Cool. Well, I'm gonna be pretty busy over the next weeks and months because uh, I've got a lot of videos on the go. I've got quite a few ideas for videos. I'm always looking for inspiration or really my whole thing is I want to know what do you guys want videos on? Um, because I don't want to make videos just for the sake of it. I, I want to make videos where there's actually a, des a need for that. Okay. Hey, Roger, Praveen, have you fished on Nudgee Beach in Brisbane before? No, I haven't. Because I live in New South Wales, I've been up to Brisbane, not in recent times, but um, no, so I haven't. Brendan, uh, Brendos, I'm going to jump off the couch and jump on your Roger's fishing on the laptop for an hour before bed. Cool. Awesome. Y-T-H-E-T-A. Hey, Roger, what's your favourite beach to fish in Sydney? To be honest, Y-T, you know, there's so many good beaches and there's such great variety. It's difficult to, to nail down a favourite. I mean, I lived at Narrabeen, so my home beach was Narrabeen and it's a fantastic beach and it's certainly right up there. But honestly, there's some cracking beaches. Bungan Beach is a fantastic beach. And you know what the good thing about Bungan Beach is? Is that people are too lazy to walk down the hill and back up again. If you know, if you know the area and you know what I mean. Because Bungan's got quite a steep hill. And yeah, it's a bit of an effort. You're really puffing when you get back up the top. But because of that, not so many people go there. And you catch everything down there. Okay, so... Okay, all right. You reckon I'll do more videos like this chat and Q&A? Okay. Well, I'll be doing my, in Roger's Fishing, we'll be doing this fortnightly. But uh, the difference in Roger's Fishing is that it'll be by Zoom and I'll actually be able to see you. Unless you don't want to be seen, you can leave the screen blank. It doesn't mean you have to uh, let me see you, but, you know, if you want to be seen and turn your camera on, then... Uh, so in Roger's Fishing, yeah, every two weeks we'll be having a 
you know, exchange. So that'll be good. Um, okay, Resi says add www. Should I have put that in here? I'm just assuming that everybody knows www. Anyway, sorry about that. Ken, what do you consider to be the best type of sinkers to use when there is a strong current on the beach? Ken, where were you? We answered that question earlier. <laughs> uh, I mainly just use star sinkers, Ken. And um, maybe you, you could just, you know, when I go down to the beach, I have a few different sizes of star sinkers. I just have like a plastic bottle with a lid with maybe three different sizes of star sinkers so I can upgrade my sinker. And you know one of the good things with a star sinker is if you put a snap swivel on it, all you gotta do is unhook the snap swivel and then you can quickly change over to a heavier sinker just using the snap swivel. It's really cool. Okay, how do I pronounce your name? Dave Volt. Dave Volt. Missed your live stream, but just signed up to your site. I've enjoyed your videos over the last while. Thanks, heaps. Looking forward to getting some more great tips. Yeah, well, there's going to be lots more coming. And um, as I sort of get more in the zone with making videos, they become a little bit easier. and You can do it a bit quicker. So, um, but, you know... I'm sure you guys would understand there's a, you know, it, there's a fair bit of work that goes into making those videos. Um, mainly because it's just not random communication. I'm trying to get some instruction across. So there's a bit of preparation and stuff that goes into it. Frank Saunders. I wonder if that's the Frank Saunders that I knew from years ago. Hi, Roger. A video on surf reel maintenance would be good. What do you do after a trip to remove salt and sand, etc.? Okay. Yeah, well, I haven't done any um, videos on fishing reel maintenance, but certainly we could do that. I was thinking of um, doing a series called Roger's Boat Shed or something like that because I've got a, I've got like all my rods and I've got fishing gear everywhere and, and I've got a, a bench area where I could um, be doing stuff from my shed with regards to... Uh, Rigs and lures and all sorts of stuff. Okay. Hey, Roger, are you doing going to do cooking videos? Uh, Dr. Ransom, Mr. Ransom, I have done one. I love cooking. Um, for the last 30 years, I owned a catering company. Uh, doing corporate events, uh, weddings. I employed chefs, waiters, bar staff. I owned a catering company on the northern beaches called Icon Event Catering um, and um, actually won a number of awards. Uh, I won Sydney Corporate Caterer of the Year on two occasions, um, which is a tough thing to do. And actually in 2009, I won Australian Corporate Caterer of the Year and got presented with that at Parliament House in Canberra, my little northern beaches business. Anyway, uh, my catering time is, I still do a little bit of catering, but um, not so much. I don't really need to. Okay, so where are we? What have we got here? Okay. All right, so, but you know, I, Actually, I was thinking of a cooking video the other day. Yeah, I do have an idea, a couple of ideas for those. Frank Saunders, thanks for addressing my question. You're welcome. Off the Rocks TV. Wow. Any tips during weather windows, currents, east and west coast? Off the Rocks TV. During weather windows and currents. Okay, I have to put a little bit of thought into that, Mr. Off the Rocks, I think. I don't so much look at ocean currents, because that's kind of more a little bit um, 
appropriate to um, you know fishing for yellowfin tuna and stuff like that pelagic species although it does affect other fish as well like snapper and mulloway different currents but um, sorry I'm just thinking out loud but I've done it as I mentioned I've been a very passionate rock fisherman all my life I still fish off the rocks regularly and I haven't done a single video on rock fishing but that's something that's a, that's just another whole area that I will get into making uh, videos on snapper off the rocks mulloway um, groper kingfish drummer all the different ones okay uh, the wagga bloke Nigerian you'll get Taylor and Jew Okay. Rare Aussie. Laugh out loud. Love, LOL. I stand my rods real in the shower. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> I stand my real rods and reel in the shower and then wipe them down. Uh, only oil reel lightly, as any lubricant will collect dust and sand. Mm. Cool. <laughs> You must love your fishing rods to take them in the shower. Cool. Off the rock, subbed. Cool. Awesome. I'll have to have a look at your channel, Off the Rocks. Just going to move a bit closer to the camera, I think. Hmm. Well, you guys have been keeping me busy. Okay, and I've been seeing lots of new names coming up, uh, which is cool. Michael Farrer, hey Roger, which pressure system do you prefer to fish for Mulloway? Mm. I've got a mate of mine who's got a, some good theories on that. I'll have to ask him on the on the barometric barometric pressure. I'll make a note of that. So that's Michael. Farah. Um, sorry, I'm just taking some notes. Okay. Yes. Um, oh, cool. So just a couple of couple of things about the Rogers Fishing membership. I mentioned in my um, my presentation, my training, that really it's a fishing club uh, because we're creating a community of like-minded fishermen that we can share our knowledge. Um, we'll all be part of that community, and. Uh, we've, because we do, you know, we have the ability to use Zoom. We can, I can actually get together with you live uh, on a regular basis, um, and all of those Zoom sessions will be archived with time signatures. So afterwards, you know, any of us could go on to one of those Zoom sessions, uh, look at the time signatures, and see when certain different things were discussed, and that'll all be kept as a record. Um, plus there's the fishing courses um, and, you know, a lot more uh, instructional videos, all sorts of stuff that's going to go on there. So it's going to be a, a growing resource. So really, you guys, this is the foundation, the beginning of uh, the Rogers Fishing community. So I'm really hoping to have some of you who can, um, yeah, just be really um, solid members and uh, help other people together with me. Okay, so I'm just looking at the chat. <laughs> there you go. I was just reading your comment, Rare Aussie. Um, tail Slap Explore. Cool. Never done beach fishing but wish to try. Do I need the skill to read the beach for this kind of fishing? It certainly would help um, being able to read the beach. I do have a video on YouTube called How to Read a Beach. I've actually got two videos on reading the beach. 
Um, they're both really helpful. I just want to address something with that is um, I did get a couple of comments from people in those videos saying, you know, it would be great if I had a, had a drone to read the beach. And because I had some drone footage in those videos, people were thinking that that's how I read the beach. But I've never used a drone in my life to read a beach. I always do it at ground level. And all I did on those videos is I had a videographer with a drone. I'd already chosen the fishing spot and we put the drone up just to give people a bit of a clearer view of exactly what I was talking about. So I never use a drone to um, find fishing spots. You don't need a drone to read the beach. Okay, Frank Saunders. Have, okay, let me just play with that chat. I've caught some good tar wine at times, but mostly loners. Do they ever school up around Sydney off the beaches? There's one particular spot oh, where it just seems to be a tar wine spot, Frank. Would you believe Warrywood Beach? There you go. Putting it out there. Um, the northern end of Warrywood Beach. I don't know what it is about that spot, but you get some big tar wine there. Man, I've caught some big tar wine there on beach worms. Um, I've caught more tar wine there than any other spot off the beach. Okay, just going back over here. Harrington S. Roger, do you believe in... Um, Harrington, it's not a lot. I haven't looked into it a lot about barometric pressure. I was having conversations with someone about it recently. And that... Um, I just got too much going around in my head. I can't remember all the details we talked about with regards to uh, the fish's swim bladder and how the barometric pressure affects the fish's swim bladder um, and that they, certain, they feed... Uh, when there's changes in the barometric pressure. But that's another subject. Uh, perhaps that would be a good subject for a video, is um, how barometric pressure affects different species. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Rabbit hate the fox. Hi, it's Gary Wolf from Dubbo. Yeah, good day, mate. The rabbit hate the fox. Rare Aussie guys, don't forget to hit the to help the site for Roger. Oh, thanks, mate. Thanks, mate. Okay, uh, Chris Fuller. Hey, Roger. Has there been much research done on the beach worms life cycle that we can read on? I love your channel, mate. When I was writing my book on beach worms, I did a bit of research. Um, obviously, there's a lot that's not known, but however, surprisingly enough, beach worms start their life cycle in the water. They're actually waterborne, which means they float around in the water uh, until they are approximately 18 millimeters in length. So the baby beach worms, when they hatch from their eggs or however they do that, they are in the water for the first part of their life. Um, and I guess that's uh, interesting. That, that would explain how beachworm populations could, you know, move from one beach to the other because the, the little baby worms would get swept in ocean currents around headlands from one beach to another. Um, anyway, that's a little bit about that for you, Chris. Okay, Junaid, I'm not quite sure, Junaid how to pronounce your name. How long can you give mullet, keep mullet alive? Any tips on how to keep them alive for longer? The main thing with keeping mullet alive is having a fresh supply of freshly oxygenated salt water. You either need to have them in a bucket with an aerator. Um, that's the thing. I mean, when you've got them in a live bait tank in a boat, you keep you need to keep turning on your uh, bilge to refresh the water, so that you're giving them fresh water all the time. So, I mean, they they can they could live for a couple of days, easy, two or three days if they've got good fresh water. I've actually kept them for that long. I've kept them for three or four days. Um, okay, Frank. They fight hard and come up good on the plate. 
What does? Tarwine. Yep, sorry, Frank. Yeah, I like Tarwine. I've got a few off the rocks. Um, also, Tarometa Headland, which is the headland in between Narrabeen. Well, it's basically Warrywood Headland. I mentioned Warrywood Beach for Tarwine, but Tarometa Headland is a good headland for Tarwine. Off the rocks. Okay. The Wagga Black Rare Aussie, I'm guessing you're sleeping with Wolf <laughs> tonight, mate. <laughs> oh, classic. Uh, no, I'm sleeping in luxury. <laughs> uh, no problem, I believe. Uh, help people who deserve it. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. Chris Fuller, how old are big tar wines? Gosh. I don't know that answer. <laughs> I'm not sure if they grow at the same rate as snapper, which are supposed to be relatively slow. Although apparently in WA, uh, they lessened the bag limit of snapper a number of years ago and made the bag the minimum size length for snapper, I think it's 40 centimetres. Uh, for snapper in WA and right now they are having a revival of snapper. I think that's maybe 15, 20 years ago they put those things in place. Someone, um, please correct me if I'm wrong. But I know my, some people I know in WA, they are just catching some massive snapper, even off the beach. Um, as a, And I think that's been the result of... Um, having a higher bag, a lesser bag limit and a higher size limit. Big T. Hi, Roger. Hope you will make a video of how to choose a good tide for fishing. I'm new to fishing. Big T, I do have a video on that, on tides for beach fishing, um, on my channel, on my YouTube channel, so you can check that out. Chris Fuller, um, yep. Frank Saunders, a successful Jew fisherman I know near Bulleye uses blackfish fillets. Okay, cool. Um, well, I mean, I know there's certainly times when blackfish fishermen off the rocks are playing a blackfish and they get nailed by a mulloway that takes their blackfish. I've heard that quite a lot of times. And I know guys who, I know a guy who fished off Long Reef Beach. Um, he fished the high tide. He got up in the middle of the night, went down to Long Reef with a live luderick. And I think the dewy he caught was 32 kilos. Near the poles at Long Reef. Early morning on a live luderick. So they are a good bait. I know other fishermen in Ulladulla. I know a guy in Ulladulla who uh, in past years used to use blackfish fillets or luderick fillets. Ah, oh, thanks, Brian. So it's 50. Yeah, I wasn't sure if it was 40 centimetres or 50 centimetres. But, um, Brian, can you confirm that? Like, I believe that the snapper are really coming on over there um, and that people are getting some really good quality fish. And do you know how long um, that size limit has been in place? Okay. Thanks, Big T. Okay, thanks, Frank. Great tail. Cool. It's gone quiet for us for a few seconds anyway. I'll keep my mouth shut. I'll try to anyway. Okay, Mick, so you've been using blackfish fillets. Okay, cool. Well, there's lots of blackfish where I live. 
So uh, I'm going to make a video actually on luteric fishing. I used to fish for um, blackfish in my teenage years. I used to fish a lot for them in Narrabeen Lake and also off the rocks. Um, I used to fish the drop-off on the running tide. You know, a lot of lakes are like that where you've got your sandbar and you've got the drop-off. And we used to burly the drop-off and then just fish in the run. Used to catch a lot of luteric that way. But back then we used to call them blackfish and niggers. But that's not so... Uh, people, might get <laughs> people might get upset about that nowadays. I don't know. Anyway, no one had a problem with it back then. Okay. 26, that's a cracking fish, Mick. Pretty heavy. Over 21 weather pascals will normally get the fish to fire up and feed. Okay. 21 weather pascals. I'll write that down. I haven't actually heard that term, weather pascals. It shows you I, I don't really know much about that. Twenty-one weather pascals. Okay. Frank Saunders, what's the theory behind helmet sinkers? <laughs> and reversing them. And the tide's running out. Frank! <laughs> oh, golly. <laughs> I've never used a helmet sinker, Frank. I'm sure they have some use. <laughs> oh, classic. Okay, Brian, yes, 50 centimetres is the size for pink snapper. I don't know how long. As long as I can remember, and at present the ban is on, so no taking of snapper. Oh yeah, yeah, because it's uh, is it is it a couple of month ban? I think. Jewfish, etc. So the kgs get hammered. Yeah, jewfish. Yeah, I've seen them. They're an interesting looking fish. Chris Fuller. Have you got a theory on how fish eat beach worms? Oh, mate, I've thought about that. Some people say that fish like Mulloway sort of go on their side and lie down and rub their belly along the sand to try and get the worms to come out, but uh, no, one, no one's in the water to see that happen. So, I mean, how would we know? if, we're, Unless we're like a fish and we're in there, how would we know? I don't know. I don't know... Um, Okay, so, um, sorry about that. Um, where were we? Yeah, so that's an interesting question. I'm not sure when you get really big surf how, how quickly the sand moves and whether it stirs them up because I know that you can be at a beach one day, have a big swell come in, and the next day the beach has been completely changed and tons of sand has been moved. So I'm not sure in those times when you've got huge waves smashing on the beach, moving a lot of sand, how that affects the beach worm population. Um, but obviously they, they handle it because they always still stay there. Okay. Five pound blackfish off Blackhead Point. That's pretty big. Wow. That's a big blackfish. Ken Robinson, Roger, why are the membership doors closing in 48 hours? I did mention that, Ken, um, earlier, um, mainly because I don't want to have too many people. <laughs> well, I mean, I just want to be able to handle uh, the members that join and um, look after them. And so it's a bit of an unknown quantity for me as to how many people are going to join Roger's Fishing. But... Um, I don't want to get overwhelmed. So I think it's probably better to do it in a measured way because it's something new. So my thinking is to have another intake sometime before Christmas. But I'm only keeping the doors open for 48 hours now. 
Um, and then there'll be another opportunity. Um, I haven't set the date for that yet, but sometime uh, before Christmas. So that's why, Ken, sort of. Uh, yeah, because it's, it's a new thing. So uh, just need to be able to handle it. And, um, you know, the website's new. Just make sure that everything's working well uh, and respond to people. So that's the main, main reason. Okay, Frank. Old fishermen write about them and swear by them. Okay. Okay, interesting. Has anyone else ever used a helmet sinker? <laughs> They're an interesting shape. I don't know why I've never bought one. I've seen them. Yeah, anyway. Probably because I just did what my dad did. My, my dad was a ball sinker guy. Although he used, um, he used a few bean sinkers as well, but I don't really use bean sinkers. Okay. Y-T-H-E-T-A. Hey, Roger, what's your favourite type of fishing apart from beach fishing? Ooh. Sugar. Man, I love it all. I love fishing for snapper offshore. Um, I like targeting mulloway from a boat. But I love lake fishing. I love fishing for flathead. I do a lot of soft plastic fishing um, for flathead. I really enjoy that. Um, I caught a flathead. Biggest is 88 centimetres. Um, but I enjoy fishing with soft plastics because I catch quite a few brim um, and keep uh, I catch some reasonable sized snapper in the lakes as well on soft plastics. Mainly brim, a few snapper, flathead. What else have I caught on soft plastics in the lake? I caught a flying gurnard, one of those really coloured things. I caught a big squid on a soft plastic, which was great. Wasn't sure what that was. Yeah, I'm not sure, Frank, about the uh, water-resisting shape of a helmet sinker. Maybe it, maybe it is. Hey, Wagga, what do you mean by boo? What's that? Okay. Okay, so Mick, you reckon that the helmet sinkers don't hold that well in the surf. So Jack, what is a good tip for casting at the beach when wavy. That's interesting. I don't think the waves impact your ability to cast. That's more your casting style and action and proficiency. Or are you talking about where to cast when there's big waves at the beach? I'm not sure whether you're talking about your ability to cast or where you cast. Okay, Frank Saunders, drummer fishing is my number one form of fishing. Can get them any tide, any time of the day. Yeah, I love drummer fishing, Frank. Oh, I used to target drummer a lot. Um, two different ways. I used to bobby cork for drummer. Uh, mainly bobby cork for drummer in uh, shallower reefy areas because you can set the depth. And that's a fun way to fish for drummer because they slam the float sometimes. I mainly used to use uh, bread and peel prawns were my main two baits for drummer. Uh, and also I like to fish with just a small pea sinker or small ball sinker right on a hook for drummer, just with peel prawns, burlying up with bread or chook pellets. So you burly with bread and chook pellets and fill with, uh, fish with peel prawns, but you also pick up other fish like groper and snapper and brim and Trevally when you're using the peel prawns that way. VFX TD, have you ever tried soft plastic lures for saltwater fishing? Heaps. All the time. Soft plastics are great. I really like fishing. I, 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 I love it. 
I, I, I kind of, uh, it's because when you're fishing with soft plastics, you're basically prospecting. The most important thing when you're fishing with soft plastics is you just don't cast in the same spot all the time. If you're in a spot, sort of go 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, and you're just covering ground. Because certainly with flathead, they are, you know, as you know, they're a, a ambush fish and they're just sitting there waiting for uh, something to come along. Chris Fuller, I love beachworming and have caught some monsters. Is there a record length for beachworm? I'm not sure about record length. I'm not, I don't know, I reckon possibly three metres, Chris. I know that I've certainly caught them about two and a half metres uh, in length. That's probably, yeah, that's about the biggest that I've caught. Mesmus9, thoughts on white bait. Is it worth using? Haven't used it off the beach. I've got a friend who used it for years in Narrabeen Lake for flathead. He used to use a two, uh, two gang tooks, two small gang tooks. I think they're about a size, size two gang hook. And he used to fish them like you fish a soft plastic and used to brain the flathead on white bait doing that. Sam, is Narrawally Inlet good for fishing in the channel? Yeah, it's a good flathead spot and whiting. And you can also pump yabbies there. It's a great little spot. Yeah, it's so beautiful. I was only down there a few days ago, went for a walk down there. Okay, Jack, where to cast at the beach when wavy? The challenge you have with big waves is you, you've got, you know, when waves break in and come in onto the beach, the water has to escape somewhere. So you, that's where you get a lot of water movement and you get a lot of rips, which is a challenge. So what I would do is I would fish uh, near a headland, depending on which direction the swell is coming. For example, on the east coast here, if you have a south swell, so that's heading in a northerly direction. If you go to the south end of the beach, it's going to be the most protected part of the beach. As opposed to the north end of the beach is going to cop the full brunt of the south swell and the waves. So in a southerly swell, you go to the south end of the beach and you're going to get less swell. It's going to be a little bit more friendly for fishing. So that's just a very quick explanation of that. Good night, Frank. See you later, mate. See you next time. VFX, thanks, Roger. Love from Turkey. Wow, Turkey. I've been to Turkey a long time ago. Wow, I wonder what you catch in Turkey. But uh, great to hear from you. That's awesome. Oh, okay, Rare Aussie. I love Abgut for drummer. You're right. Abgut is really, really, it's very good bait for drummer. Yeah. I know a few guys. I've used it a couple of times, and I know a few guys who would use that. Yeah, totally. Actually, you've just reminded me of something, because when I get some abalone soon, when I'm down there diving, the next time I go diving, I'm going to keep the guts. I didn't keep them. The last time I got some abalone, I chucked the guts out. That wasn't very smart. Oh, well. Got to remember that. Yeah, don't want to waste anything. Okay. How's the time going? What is it? I'm not even looking. Um, okay. <laughs> now, what do you mean, Wagga Blake? I'm into balls as well. They do the job. <laughs> Are you talking about bull sinkers, um, Wagga Bloke? Um, Brian, when I lived in Darwin, Saudi Arabia, I used to troll for cod. Wow, okay. And picked up some nice fish. Ah, oh, yeah, you're talking about the uh, Abgut 
rare Aussie. Yeah, no, I'm sure it would freeze. Okay. Um, hopefully, I can. Hopefully, I can find some abgut. I'm keen to have a dive, but you know, I just wrote, I don't like going diving unless it's pretty flat. Because I'm, you know, I just want to cruise. Just like to get out there and relax, acclimatize, sniff around. I've actually speared quite a few whiting just with a hand spear when I've been diving. One um, one afternoon I was down at Tabari Beach and I speared six whiting. Um, so they're not that hard to spear whiting. Oh, right, okay. So in Turkey you get bluefish, tuna and learfish. Okay, cool. All right. Ah. <laughs> okay. Have I fished many beaches in Victoria? No. Um, I've mainly been down there on surf trips. My wife used to be a professional surfer. She did the world tour for three years. And when we first got married, I spent three years traveling the world, surfing, uh, following the pro tour. So, um, yeah, I haven't done much fishing in, in Vic, so yeah, there you go. Mesmus9, do I have any pets? We have two dogs. They are grudels, if you know what a grudel is. Golden Retriever slash Poodle. They're big, like standard Poodle size, crossed with a Golden Retriever. They're awesome. We love our dogs. They're not in here with me at the moment, but um, you'd like them if I brought them in. They're the only pets, though. Hey, Ken. Okay, Ken, what are the most important things to consider when buying a rod, reel, and tackle for beach fishing? Ken, that's, um, that's a fairly broad question. How will I answer that? Well, first of all, if we go back to what I was saying about you get what you aim for, Ken, you've got to consider what, what are you going to fish for? Are you going to do light beach fishing and mainly fish for whiting and brim? Because that'll influence the, the size and strength of the rod. Oh my gosh, a dog has come in the, in the back door. Another one. <laughs> what the heck? Moses, come here. Come on, come here, mate. I'll introduce, come here. Come here, come on. I'll introduce you to Moses. That's Moses. I'll put him back down again. Oh, no, Lucy's... She's a girl, but she's humping Moses because she gets a bit jealous. <laughs> Bet you didn't expect that. Oh, well. Um, back to the chat. <laughs> Oh, golly. <laughs> DJ Liptone. I just came back from two weeks of holiday driving from Brisbane to Airlie Beach and back. Stopping at a few beach campsites and fished a few times. Cool. What did you catch? Let's go fishing. Do you find it hard going rock fishing as you get older? Um, you know, as you know, my... Passion levels are pretty high, but I'm just trying to look after myself as I get older um, and keep myself fit and healthy. So I do a fair bit of exercise um, because really, really I'm wanting to continue for a fair while longer. Uh, I don't have any issues at the moment. I'm quite strong um, and I've fished off the rocks for 40 years, so I know my way around the rocks. But... Um, I think as you get older, you just seriously, you know, you might have to make a few sacrifices with what you eat and drink. 
But if, if you want to be able to pursue some of the things that you, are really important to you, that you enjoy, it's worth um, looking after yourself. And so, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I'm 60 now, but I don't know, I'd like to think I've got at least another 15 years of fruitful rock fishing. And then I think, obviously, as you get older, the beach is a, is a lot more uh, gentler than the rocks. But I have no intention of taming my rock fishing at this point in time. Okay. Uh, the Wagga Black Plastics, you open up every single kind of predator fish in the area. Yeah, I guess so. Because they're, you know, they're preying on a moving target. Michael Everton. I think this is the first time I've seen you tonight, Michael. Have you been to the Australian Antique Fishing Tackle Museum? <laughs> is a video on YouTube by Warwick Doncaster and the largest fishing tackle shop, Mo Tackle, on YouTube. I'm aware of Mo Tackle. They've been around for years. They're up at Coffs Harbour. Um, but have never been to the Antique Fishing Tackle Museum. A rated PG show. Okay. Chris Fuller. When it comes to beach worming, what conditions are, are a definite no-go? E.g., is a certain wind direction or something that they don't like. I don't think the I haven't found the wind really affects them. I still catch um, plenty of worms in when it's windy. It can be blowing a gale, but I still catch worms. Um, I actually did a, one of my videos on beachworming on YouTube is beachworming at night. I never really bothered to do that, but I went down one night with a head torch, and it was exactly the same as during the day. Um, because in my research, I, f I found that beach worms are blind. They just have an incredibly strong sense of smell. So they're not affected by light. So you can catch them day or night. The wind doesn't bother them. What I find is probably the most hindrance is if you're trying to catch worms in big swell. Because you'll be at the beach and the power, just the sheer power of a wave washing up the beach and then washing down the beach makes it a little bit more difficult. Not impossible, it just makes it more difficult. Okay, I'm just looking here. Um, all right, so I've answered that question. Ooh. <laughs> okay. Okay, so it's quarter to 10. And I've been on since seven. There you go. Didn't wasn't, didn't didn't really know how long I'd be on here for, but um, so we've been nearly two hours in the chat. That's incredible. You guys, you know, that's incredible. Um, so good. Rare Aussie. I'm fifty eight and just had a heart attack. I didn't know how much it would slow you down. So now I had to change a few things with my fishing. Really sucks. Well, Mick, you know, even when you've had a heart attack, you know, it's amazing the ability of the body to recover. And, you know, you undoubtedly that's that's not a uh, pleasant thing to go through. But if I can encourage you, uh, if you look after yourself physically you can gain strength. I really believe that. If you put some good things in your body, make sure you get some rest and do do some appropriate exercise. You need to get your blood pumping, even if it's just walking. Um, do something that you enjoy and walk. But, you know, you can, you can gain strength. Um, and, you can, and you can certainly, as you do that, you can gain confidence. So, yeah, so just want to encourage you, mate. Um, Resi, what's your go-to beach for worms? Well, I live at Ulladulla. Um, there's lots of beaches here. 
Um, I haven't really had to go far because Wairo Beach, that's spelled W-A-I-R-O, that's a big beach and it's got beach from it's got worms from one end to the other. You'd never exhaust them. Zillions. Uh, similar for Tabari Beach. Tabari Beach, honestly, you go down there sometimes, you wave and, and you'll see a hundred worms will come up at once. You only need to walk 20 metres and you've got, you, know, you hardly have to move at all. Uh, that's only two beaches uh, and most of the other beaches have worms as well. Okay, Darren Bombardier. Hi, Roger. I go fishing between North and South Stradbroke, cool, islands. I'm wondering if your opinion on jet skis and boat noise as to how it affects a fishing and what distance to fish from these annoyances. I've got a mate who has a jet ski and I've been fishing with him on it. Um, and when we fish from the jet ski, it hasn't, we've done really well from that point of view. Um, I know it's annoying when you're a fisherman and, you know, whether it's a jet ski or just a, a fast boat, if people don't give you a wide berth or if they don't respect your fishing. I know when I'm in a boat, I respect other fishermen. I, I treat them the way that I'd like to be treated. And I don't go racing past someone else. I'll go around them. And that's even if I'm outside in the ocean and someone's anchored up and they've taken the time to get a burly trail going. I'll, get, I'll stay away and respect that. I mean, it used to annoy me if I would anchor in a spot, I'd go out fishing. I used to fish off Long Reef. I'd position myself right where I wanted to be. I'd just start getting a nice burly trail going and then some guys would just come burning straight over the back of my boat. No idea. Anyway, I just, I guess that's just ignorance. Anyway, we're just, uh, how do we get onto that? The jet skis, that's right. Okay, where are we? Kaiser. I like fishing. Good on you, Kaiser. <laughs> That's a good simple comment, isn't it? I like fishing. Yeah, no problems, uh, Resi. Um, Chris, your videos helped me to catch more fish than my mates who call themselves fishermen. Wow. How good's that? That's great. I love that. Okay. Yeah, thanks, mate. Yeah. Yeah, Mick, I reckon you've got to aim at least, you know, you've got to start thinking you're going to live into your 90s, mate. And that was just a speed hump. David Tickner, thanks for all the videos, Roger. Yeah, you're welcome, David. Cool. Leslie, rare Aussie, I had a heart bypass 21 years ago, changed diet, stopped drinking, took up bike riding, all good now, good luck mate, good on you mate, that's awesome. Sorry, I thought you were based near Bribie Island, cool, okay, no, I'm based New South Wales, South Coast used to be Sydney. Marcel, didn't realise you were in Ulladulla, thought you were on Sydney Northern Beaches. Yeah, Marcel, I was on Sydney Northern Beaches. I've been here for three years in January, but prior to that I'd been on the Northern Beaches for 40 years, so long time. Michael Everton, have you competed in casting competitions in state fishing tournaments? No, I haven't. Um, yeah, no, I haven't never done that. I've just been in some basic club fishing competitions, that's all. I did a lot of fishing off Churros Heads Beach. Worms by the bucket. Oh, wow, okay. Cool. Churros, how far is that from me? That's maybe... It's only about an hour hour and a half, I think. 
Chris Fuller, when you went night worming, were the worms as prolific as during the day? Um, I went, um, Chris, I went night worming at Long Reef Beach. Um, Long Reef can be patchy with beach worms. Um, sometimes it's not the best beach worming beach. Uh, but I think the night I went beach worming and filmed that, there was a nor'easter, and Long Reef is more protected in a nor'easter, so that's why I went to Long Reef. And the number of worms that I saw in the dark that night was pretty typical of what you would see at Long Reef. Um, so that's the answer to that. I would only recommend going worming at night if um, you had to work during the day and, and, and you missed the low tide. Um, and you had a low tide after dark. Uh, that's probably the only time you'd ever do it. Cyrax. Hi, Roger. I forgot to ask before, but time of year for flathead off the beach. I'm at Naruma. Okay, cool. Um, from what I know, Cyrax... This is what happens. The flathead do move in and out of the estuaries. They come into the lakes and rivers around November, October, around October. They actually, dusky flathead are out off the beaches in the ocean. They come in to, they're around the entrances of the lakes around October. They move into the lakes and rivers and then they move out again at the end of February. Um, and certain places you can catch a lot of flathead at that time. So when the flathead move back out of the lakes and rivers around the end of February and in March, uh, around that March time, you can get large concentrations of flathead on the beaches and you can catch them on soft plastics off the beaches at that time. But also I reckon the gun bait is pilchards, either whole pilchards on a gang talk or half pilchards is the go for that. Um, Mr. Ransom, well done, Rog. See you tomorrow on the tube. Cool. We've only just begun. The Wagga bloke, yep. Marcel, I fish a lot between Aladulla to Batemans Bay. Super productive. Fantastic. Maybe I will get to meet you sometime. Yeah, that's it. Um, Wagga bloke, yeah, just pace yourself. Cool. All right, guys, it is currently eight minutes to 10. So I think I'm going to finish this live at 10 p.m. I think that's... Um, I normally go to bed pretty early because I like to get up early. Now, just, just a couple of quick words about Rogers Fishing. I think that joining Rogers Fishing will definitely help you to take your fishing to the next level. Certainly, um, if you're in the early stages of your fishing journey, and even, um, you know, even for a lot of you guys out there who are experienced fishermen, I think the community aspect, uh, and certainly, you know, I'm not going to hold back in anything that I know, um, in helping people, I'm sure that, um, you know, I mean, I obviously don't know everything. I'm not an encyclopedia of fishing, but I've got a lot to give in that area. So, you know, when you consider, as I mentioned earlier in the, my presentation, we invest a lot of money in all sorts of things. But investing into strategy, into um, knowledge um, is, I think, more important. I know over the years that's been... Um, what's helped me the most is getting the right information. And I reckon, I mean, some of the people already who are joining Rogers Fishing, it's going to be fantastic. So, yeah, I really encourage you. I think it's a good investment to do that. Okay, just looking over here. Um, Mesmus 9 Pilchards, when you buy them in their normal state, 
I mean, they're a relatively soft bait. Certainly, if you th uh, freeze them and thaw them out several times, they get really soft. Um, I don't think there's a way to stop them. Oh, you know what? I've never done it. I've never used that cotton stuff. You know how you um, quite a few fishermen, even snapper fishermen, they use that like elasticy cotton that they wrap around their bait. I've always thought that's a bit. Anyway, obviously it, it still works, but. That's something you could do with the pilchards to stop them from coming off your ganged hooks. Otherwise, I don't really bother about it too much. Yeah, there you go, Wagga bloke, try cotton. Sorry, mate, I hadn't seen your comment. And gauze material, okay. Okay. So you reckon it's about an hour to Turos. Okay, because it's uh, Bateman's. Bateman's is 35 minutes from me. Maruya is about another 20. Yeah, and it's just south of Maruya, right. Okay. Thanks, Leslie. I must admit, I haven't watched the block for a while. I think Scott Cam's a nice bloke, but I've had enough of all that stuff. I'd rather be fishing. Uh, Ken, how many courses do you access in the membership? You mentioned two. At the moment, I've just finished creating my Beach Fishing Masterclass course, which has 15 modules. So that's um, ready to go and also my beach worming masterclass. So there's just the two courses, Ken, at this point in time. Um, I think I'll probably want to get some feedback as to what course I should focus on next. Not sure at this stage. Okay, Andre, A Ange, sorry. Yeah, thanks, Ange. He says, hi, Roger, I'm your age, started fishing at 10 years old, but still love watching your videos. Well done. Thanks, mate. Chris Fuller, thank you for answering my questions. Love your work, Roger. Thanks, Chris. Marcel, thanks for doing this live stream. Unfortunately, I caught the tail end as I was traveling between Canberra and Sydney. Okay, looking forward to a great season. Yeah, thanks, mate. I look forward to seeing you as well. Uh, yes, Cyrex, I am in Ulladulla. UK sea fishing with Big Dan. G'day, Big Dan. How you doing, mate? Hey, everyone. So you obviously are in the UK, Dan. That's awesome, mate. Great to hear from you. Make sure that you um, you join the next live. It'd be really good. Okay, Vince Stock, absolutely love beach fishing, awesome. Yeah, beach fishing is a great thing. You can catch some great eating, awesome eating fish off the beach. Great place to go with a couple of mates, hang out. Ah, oh, really? Yeah, Mick, I haven't fished down there, but you reckon there's always a great gutter with a coiler lake. Meets Churros Beach. Oh, right. Okay. Hmm. You know, you know, Mick, we've got such a great area down here. It's, uh, it's awesome. Some really good beaches. I'm quite familiar with all the um, dirt tracks. You know, the unmarked dirt tracks off the highway that take you to some of the places. It's really good. Morton Island, the best. UK sea. Yes, mate, I do live sea fishing streams from the UK. Oh, cool. Awesome. I'll have a look at your channel, Dan, when I get a moment. Michael Everton, Ken, see South African saltwater shore angling. Fishing YouTube videos. Thanks for your YouTube fishing videos, Roger. Informative and interesting indeed. 
Cool. Daniel Wood. Are there any salmon on the Central Coast right now? I'm not sure, Daniel, right now. Um, I'd expect there should be. There's a heap down here. I've always caught lots of salmon on the northern beaches in Sydney. Central Coast is not much further. KP, the link doesn't work. Hmm. Which link is that? The link doesn't work. That's not the website. Hmm? Okay. Hmm? There's a link from admin. Apparently, okay, Kevin. Hello, Roger. I have fished all my life. Very little beach work, though. I look forward to doing the coursework you provided. Thank you for all your work you've done thus far. Keep up the great work. Thanks, Seeps, Kevin. Really appreciate it, mate. Ah. There's the link. <laughs> okay, Coiler Lake is closed to the sea at the moment. It's even better then. Okay, Coiler Lake is well known for its prawns, isn't it, Mick? I haven't been prawning down there. Um, I've been prawning in the lakes around here. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's not that much, it's not that far away. But, yeah, they get heaps of prawns, don't they? Okay. Okay, there is salmon up here in coughs. Cool. Is that where you are at the moment, Mick, in Coffs Harbour? All right, guys, it's now just after 10 o'clock. I've really enjoyed this time. Um, and I must admit, I was a little bit nervous at the start because it's, you know, whenever you do something new. Um, but, yeah, it's been good. So, Daniel, what are some popular catches on the rocks right now? What's that? Okay. Okay. All right. Well, I just think, Daniel, off the rocks at the moment, you're going to get mixed species. Um, once again, it depends on what you're targeting. When I go rock fishing, I target a specific species, like I'll go fishing for snapper or I'll go fishing for drummer. If I'm fishing with unweighted pilchards in a burley trail off the rocks, then you're going to get a variety of different fish. Um, or you can fish for luderick. But, yeah, there's a whole variety of things. You, but yeah, it's a great time of the year, Daniel really good time of the year so it's just a matter of deciding what you'd like to fish for okay last couple of comments okay hope to see you over here dan when you get a chance big flathead in coiler yep i've heard about that uh mick uh oh you're in coughs okay that's an awesome spot too really good marcel have you fished the beaches around to meal yep i have Okay. All right. Well, I'm just going to say good night, guys. Thanks heaps for all of your interaction. It's been great meeting you. And yeah, I'll see you shortly. I'll see you in Rogers Fishing. And um, as I mentioned, I'll be putting up a bunch of new videos on YouTube, um, free content, and also providing things on Rogers Fishing that are exclusive to Rogers Fishing. Okay, so good night, everybody. Thanks, mate. Thanks to all of you. Okay. Uh, this is Roger signing out. <laughs> See you, guys. Got to get that thumb in the right place. Yep. I'll catch you soon. <laughs>